Just going to hang on for about uh, two more minutes before we get rocking and rolling on today's class. Also, uh, just waiting our, on our instructor to hop in here. So yeah, about two more minutes and we'll we'll get going. All right, just give me one second. I'm just going to check and make sure our instructor is about to hop on as well, and we'll get started. I'll be right back.
Okay, I am back. So let's get going. Sorry for the delay, folks. Uh, we'll start out how we always do and check in with everybody on their uh, 10 fours and their lead gen, see how everything is going out there. There's a few of you. Uh, I was on vacation for a week and then unfortunately sick for another week. So there's some names um, out there that I am not familiar with. So I'll probably check in with you a little bit extra and just introduce myself. But uh, if we can start with Ashley, how are things going? Um, things are going good. I was going to ask uh, for my buyer who was looking for a property where there really isn't anything on the market. Um, they messaged me about a house that was sitting open and vacant, but not for sale. Is that something that I should or could call about, like to go through like the title company to find out who owns it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was going to work on doing that, but I didn't know exactly if that was how I should go about doing that. That would be the first step that I would do is, is see who, who owns the property. There's no, there's no yard sign on it or anything. Correct. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Um, yeah, absolutely. Good thought. Okay. Um, it's been sitting empty for, I guess, like two years. I don't drive down there all the time. So that's just what they had said from they live there. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Uh, good, Aaron. How was Disneyland? Uh, actually went on a cruise instead. Uh, it was great, also. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. Um, so I took some buyers and looked at some properties yesterday. Um, still haven't found anything that they want to offer anything else on. Um but I'm still the one you were there. trying to put together in Coos Bay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I went out there uh, yesterday and we toured uh, three properties um, and they just aren't finding what they need. And she, she tells me that she feels like she doesn't have long left to live, which I'm like, man, it's, it's like, do I, you know, I'm, I'm coming, you know, do I, still try to find them a house or do i just like go okay well i feel it it seems like you're gonna die soon so you want to just not stress about moving i don't know you know i'm i'm at kind of a crossroads of what to do with that client right now well i'm curious so does the move kind of go to the core of their motivation like what, what's the motivation for wanting to make the move their motivation is they they want to live on a single level where she can get around the house easy and get into the house. So there's there's about 15 steps um, from her like driveway to her front door in the house uh -huh. she's in now. And she's having a hard time navigating stairs. So uh -huh. they need to find something that can you could easily build a ramp to or you know something to that effect. Um, and we're just not finding some single level properties in their price range with a big enough master suite. You know, it's just like, I, I'm, I'm at the point where it's like, well, something has to give, you know, you get no land and a house in town or, you know, they're looking at these fixer uppers, but I'm like, you guys are old. You don't want a fixer upper. I'm just, I'm having a, a hard time with trying to just, I guess steer them in the right direction because they're looking for me. They're looking at me for guidance, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I don't want to just, you know, find a house and then make an offer for them. You know, they have to want it. Right. You know? I totally agreed. So yeah, I, I would certainly just do your best to make the showing process is just fun and stress-free as possible when you're out there, you know, just shopping it shouldn't be like too fraught and too stressful. They're just looking, they're not making an offer on anything. So there's no reason really to stress through that. And yeah, I would go back to like their core motivation for wanting to make that move. I totally get it. It's no fun to feel like you're a prisoner in your own house because you can't get up and down the stairs. And if that goes to like really the core of their motivation, why they're out there looking, just tell them to stick with it. Something's going to come out that, that really fits the bill. Um, and you know, you're not trying to waste their time or yours. So just make sure that the ones that you do go and see are actual real possibilities. If you've already been out there and they've maybe had some choices that were like, we want this, we want to go see this, 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 and this, and then they've gotten there. And for the exact reasons that you they would, they were like, never mind, no, this is too much work, but you knew that ahead of time. 
Yeah. Now is the time when, if you've already kind of granted a few of those showings, even knowing that you were probably going there for no reason, when they give you another list of three, I would definitely kind of be like, well, are you sure? Because this one I'm seeing probably isn't going to be conducive for this reason. This one's not going to be right. So what if we just go see this one? So I don't want you guys to get stressed out and tired out by this showing process and not seeing things that aren't going to work in the first place. But I would always definitely continue to go back to that motivation and just make sure they're the right houses that are really like fitting their search criteria. And, um, you know, the ones that, you, you know, don't waste your time, don't waste their time. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think you're doing great with it. Just stick with it. Yeah. That's I mean, great. I've had clients like yeah. that before as well that, you know, they were stuck in a two-story house and either, you know, she would have to make her way up to the second floor through a lot of effort and then not come downstairs for a week at a time or be stuck downstairs. And, you know what I mean? And that's, that's not fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to get past. They they seem to be in, discouraged after we don't see anything. So I just have to remind them, you know, like, you know, we didn't find anything this weekend, but I'm still going to send you listings. They come my way. As stuff gets knocked down kind of in your price range, as, as home prices are lowering, we're getting, you know, homes that are entering their price range every week, every, you know, about Thursday yeah. or Friday. There's like a, one or two homes that, now are in their price range so i think we just have to keep at it and hopefully she just sticks around long enough so but yeah. she, you know she told me yesterday she's like man i'm just not feeling good i don't have long left i just i feel it and i'm like man it's kind of dark but i mean the house <laughs> so if that right place comes out then that's all the more reason to just jump on it as quickly as possible too because yeah. I, I can see it from both angles and yeah absolutely okay. uh sandy how are things going in your business uh well um <clears throat> nothing new to report this week i still have a contract that's ending um pending a close uh trying to there's a tenant in the building who needs to vacate so um, I'm just uh, entering in my contacts and starting to head out for coffees with people and stuff like that. Wonderful. That's what we like to hear. Thanks, Sandy. Hey, Felicia, good to see you. How's it going? Going well, thank you. Um, yeah, I had a couple showings this weekend with clients and um, I don't think the places are going to work out, but um happy that they're still looking and interested. So um, other than that, I've been trying to stay consistent on Facebook posting um, for lead gen. And I do have a coffee scheduled with a lender this week. Um, I've reached out to some other allied folks, you know, just trying to network as much as possible. Um, but <clears throat> that's about it. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, Deborah, how's it going? Oh, you're muted. I am in the um, process of moving from the Coos Bay and North Bend area, oh. and and um, actually have my house for sale or getting ready to list it. So, um, but it, I, I'm really new to Keller Williams. I've only been here for like a week, so I'm still still uh, getting my footing and getting moved into my office and and that kind of stuff so yeah great well welcome to the group we're happy to have you here thanks um emily how are things with you hey there can you guys hear me yeah um i went into the sunset corridor office this last week while i was in the Portland area for Thanksgiving. So that was fun. That was my first time being in the office. Awesome. And um, <clears throat> this morning I was just working on catching up on a class that I had missed. So other than that, it's going pretty well. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Hey, Kevin, how are things going with you? Sorry, my fault. Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, doing good. Uh, I have a couple of meetings with some lenders uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, and then I was in Seattle for Thanksgiving, so I wasn't really doing much, just spending time with family. 
Yeah, likewise. Awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Nora, how are you? Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm doing good. Um, I haven't been able to do much, but to send out the um, the postcards and share with family and friends what I do and all that stuff. Thanks, Nora. You're welcome. Hey there, Lucy. How's it going? Good. And I just been doing the postcards. Great. Um, I did get some uh, people reply to not send it no more, so I know it's working. Fantastic. That's great. Good job. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then on lay. Um, I just started out. So right now, my goal plan is just, you know, gain all the knowledge I can, you know, and when I'm ready, I'm just going to pop off and let everybody know. So I'm Come on. licensed real estate agent. Uh -oh. all right. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And Miss Courtney, how are you? Good. Um, so I haven't made any new contacts today, but my father was talking to me actually about potentially like buying a piece of land and putting a manufactured home on it. But now I need to talk to my team because I don't know what my role will be in that besides finding the actual land, but it's something that could happen. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, by and large in that scenario, you know, you, you can go above and beyond in, in, making certain connections for your client and kind of doing some some extra due diligence. But really, at the end of the day, in that sort of scenario, you help them secure the land. And as far as all the ins and outs of putting the manufactured home on it, that's usually on them to do with uh, the manufactured home supplier. And there's not a lot for you to do in that. It's, it should be technically an easier transaction rather than harder. Um, so yeah, go for it. That's what I thought, but I guess the, like the, what is it? Like the manufactured home sales place they were looking at was like, oh, do you have a real estate agent? Cause like we'll contact them. And I was like, well, what do I do besides help you find the land? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so thank you everyone. Today, uh, as you all know, we are going to go on the Ignite 2.0 class, Win the Seller, and we have with us our instructor for the day, Mr. Matt Kendall. Uh, Matt Kendall was born uh, here in the town that I live and operate, Eugene, Oregon. Uh, he became licensed in 2017 after working for Costco for over 13 years. Uh, he became full-time agent in 2018 and capped in his second year. Uh, Matt chose to work with KW because of our emphasis on continuing education and growth. And now he's serving on his third going on fourth year in the uh, Agent Leadership Council and is the head of our Red Day Committee. And with that, I will hand things over to Mr. Kendall for our Win the Seller class. Hey, Matt. Hey, guys. How are we doing today? Good, good, good. Okay, let me I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. Hey, Matt, Matt, real quick. Yeah. How many pies yeah, did you buy, dude? How many did I give out? Yeah, how many did you get? Uh, <laughs> I it was a slow year, but we got 50 out. Okay, wow. Did you? How many did you end up keeping yourself? <laughs> I will tell you, <laughs> I ended up, I only had four extra. Oh, wow. Then we ended up giving to um, some friends actually over the weekend. They were like, oh my gosh, I forgot to get a pie. And I really need one right now. Can I drive by your house? And I was like, uh, yeah, bring it over. Come on by. So uh, even so after the pie fun. giveaway, there was an opportunity to try and network. And uh, I saved the day for a couple of people on Saturday. So, <laughs> you know, hopefully we can get some business out of that one down the road. So, yeah, yeah that was nice. Yeah, it was nice actually. Costco, I got fifty, and I just had him put it on a pallet, load it in the back of my truck, <laughs> good to go. I know, I saw that. I was like, "Holy smokes, he's got a truckload!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Costco has. I have just enough connection still. Uh, Ashley, you know, like you can you can still network just enough to be able to make it a little bit easier for those pie giveaways because you're you're always trying to sell everybody and i'm telling you there were some people in that line that were not happy with me walking right up to the front <laughs> and i was like sorry and so she just like walked outside and i got my pallet and loaded up and 
Hell yeah. <laughs> got mine and I was on the road. So nice, nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was nice for sure. Okay. So let me share this. Make sure you guys can all see this. Can you all see the guy getting getting handed keys? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, card all card. So, just so we're all on the same page, this is my first time teaching this particular class. So, we're all going to learn something today. <laughs> all right. So, today is when the seller. We've got some different things we're going to talk about. <clears throat> I've got a, <clears throat> excuse me, a listing presentation. I'm going to show you that's mine. Um, I know that tomorrow, I think, don't quote me on this, tomorrow, tomorrow is actually going to do a listing presentation class um, for the PC for the PC uh, program, but I'll give you a little, you know, snapshot of what I'm doing too. Um, okay, so let's see what we got here. Let's go to the next page. Okay, so you guys did win the buyer already. So now we're doing win the seller, right? So <clears throat> today's agenda, all right? So we're gonna go over uh, obviously what an A seller is. Um, getting the appointment, pre-listing pre packet, uh, listing appointment itself, the listing agreement, right, which is the nuts and bolts of uh, making sure that we are holding everybody accountable to what they're going to do. Then we can go over some, re we can recap everything and then, you know, ask some questions and um, ahas. Um, so first one, so yes, this is very true. While leads are vital to your sales business, seller listings are criti critical to your ability to build it to its highest level with the lowest cost and highest net. Gary Keller, the minor real estate agent. So it's very true, right? I'll tell you, I've done a ton of networking. Yes, it's great to work with buyers. I love buyers. That's honestly why I got in the business because um, I had a great realtor. I had an awesome agent. She was amazing and went above and beyond. And I was like, I want to be like her when I grow up, right? I want to I wanna give every client every first time homeowner for sure, that same level of um, client service. So um, let me just make sure everybody's muted. Hold on guys. Um, uh, anyway, but with that being said, remember buyers, uh, you know, you still wanna have your probably, unless you're actually just a buyer's agent, um, you can spread yourself pretty thin with buyers versus getting a listing, putting a sign in the yard and being able to market your actual property that you are listing and you know all the information about and you can push it out to the world. Oops. Okay. So A sellers. So right, A sellers are able, ready, and willing to do business the next 14 days. Now, while that is true, a lot of times you can still have an A buyer that is a little, um, that just has to do some things to the property, right? right? Where you can shorten a timeline that may be 30 days down to 14 days. Um, obviously, depending on your amount of um, business that you're doing and, and um, difficulty for the property, you can sort of be able to assess that. Obviously, right? If there's somebody that's ready and willing to go in 14 days, but they need a new roof. Um, Probably not going to happen in 14 days because it's going to take two months to get on somebody's calendar. Um, okay. So the three L's of the MREA is listings, leverage, and leads. So we are... Leverage are the things that you can hand out to somebody else to be able to do, right? Like you don't have to necessarily do everything yourself at a certain um, volume level, right? Getting the leads will create the listings, will then create the income to create the leverage, right? Well, then, which will then increase more leads. It's the best kind of cycle ever, right? So you want to go out there, get the leads, get those listings, put your sign in the yard, make more money, right? and essentially follow the MREA plan um, and be able to continue that, that uh, circle. 
Okay, virtually the seller's listing. So this is what I was kind of talking about with spreading yourself thin with the buy side, um, right? Seller listings mean you can uh, marketing opportunities, right? Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, I do some drone stuff on uh, TikTok. Um, any possible way that you can get that out there both helps with your um, helps with your personal branding while also accomplishing the goal of getting the house sold. Right, because ultimately you want to get the house sold. You want to get it sold fast. You want to get it sold for the highest amount of, amount of money net to the seller um, so that you look like the hero. And obviously everybody in that process gets what they need. Um, yeah, for sure, right? I think we've all had a buyer who's called you at a weird hour of the day. Like I have had one that I had to really drop the hammer on. She texted me at 1130 at night one time. And I was like, hey, guess what? It's not a good idea. We're not going to do this anymore. 1130 at night is not appropriate. 99% uh, of the time, you don't have a seller calling you at 1130 at night because you've already set that precedent at the listing appointment. Um, so you get, your, you get to be able to have some of your time back. Um, uh, seller listings maximize your per hour compensation. Right, so the amount of time that it takes for you to show a property versus to market a property that you already have listed, uh, you're obviously going to make more money uh, per hour because you're not having to drive around, spend gas, spend money, um, doing all the things that it takes to um, facilitate a buy side. Um, volume, right? You can have a hundred list. Working a hundred listings is a whole lot easier than working a hundred buyers. Right? It's definitely. Um, Definitely something that having a problem buying signs because you're out of signs uh, is a whole lot easier than having to coordinate um, showing properties. Um, with seller listings, you're on the front end of pricing, right? So you get to help dictate the price. Um, obviously, you know, we all want to do our market research. We want to make sure that the house is listed correctly. We're going to go into that a little bit later too with just the, there's a pyramid, right, that talks about you know, getting getting infinity dollars versus getting zero dollars. And you want to be obviously somewhere in the middle, but you also want to not price it so high that it's going to sit on the market forever. And, you know, you're going to have to talk your sellers back off a ledge. And obviously probably, probably marketed seller listings, right? Bring in more business. I, one of my things that I always like to do is I always like to pressure wash driveways. Every time you get a listing, They'll bring my pressure washer out there. It takes me a day. I usually meet six, eight neighbors. Right, hand them a business card. Hey, if you're ever in the, if you're ever thinking about selling, here's my card. Right, they're gonna see my truck a hundred times in the next month. So always good to have a face and a name to go together. Um. Okay, let's see. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so let's see. We got okay. So all of our clients are amazing, right? We're grateful for them. I want to back this train up a little bit. Hang on. Um, all of our clients are amazing, right? And we're grateful to them for choosing us. But also, we need to give them our uh, our best work and efforts. Um, yes, sellers are special because they bring us listings, right? So not only. Does the sign go in the yard for that property? But like I said, it can it can procure more listings. Leads, listings, leverage. They're going to tell you that till the cows come home because it is very true. Um, okay. Yes, because of these, this is very true. Because of these qualities, right? Focusing on at least some of your lead generation to listings is a great leverage for your business. So obviously, you know, you want to help anybody that's going to come into your sphere because that's our business. Um, but but being able to leverage that and be able to focus on getting the listings versus necessarily focusing on the buyers. Now, if you join a team and you're a buyer's agent, it's great. That's your job. And that's what you like to do. That's great. Um, but if you're trying to grow the business for yourself, um, then that being able to get that sign and get your facial recognition in somebody's neighborhood um, and being able to send out postcards, right? To those people and continually remind them um, this is a, a fantastic piece to be able to 
be able to um, market yourself and leverage it. Okay, seller service cycle. Sorry, how long is it? I need this out of the way. Okay, lead con leads conversion, right? So number one is lead generation, lead follow-up. That's obviously, that's step one. Um, Pre-listing, right? So the transaction is today. We want to make sure and get that transaction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, look up the property. Ashley, I heard you were talking about title companies, right? Same thing. Have the conversation with either title company, get on our lid, look up names, addresses, phone numbers, um, and be able to see what, what their motivation could be, right? Maybe that vacant house is somebody out of town. This literally happened in my neighborhood. Somebody's mom had passed away. I swear to you, this is true. And he basically, she passed away. He came over, went through the whole house, took all the things that he wanted and her, left her ashes in a marble box on the kitchen counter and then flew back to Boston. I literally called my dad and I was like, hey, I just need you to know that I love you. And I know this is a weird phone call, but this is what happened. <laughs> and I told him and he goes, wow. Uh, yeah, if you could not leave my ashes on the kitchen counter and abandon our house, that'd be great. And I was like, I... I know, yes, that it apparently it happens. So um, anyway, being able to dig into that and, and figure out what their motivation is, um, right? That guy had no motivation. I tried to buy his house cash, like just give me the deed. You don't have to do any work and nothing. He just wanted nothing to do with selling the house. Um, so, right, so the goal obviously would be to get that listing consultation, um, right? And then of course, once, you know, the next piece, right? Servicing and marketing, Obviously, you want to, um, you know, want to get the pictures and get it all out there and, and be able to make sure that you're putting it out to the public um, so that not only you can get it sold, but um, privacy to come record yourself um, as the professional who um, has good listings and takes good pictures or hires a good photographer, all that good stuff. Um, stages when, when it's needed, all that good jazz. Um, offers and negoti negotiations, right? Obviously, that's part of it, right? Doing the contracts um, and making sure that when offers come in, um, they're obviously presented in a timely fashion. You're following through with the transaction deadlines, um, contract to close. So you accept the contract. Sorry, negotiations. This is the back and forth, right? So you're representing your seller's best interest, making sure that they um, understand the contracts. Make sure they understand what a closing cost credit is. Uh, I had a for sale by owner that got all bent out of shape because I said, hey, do you want me to represent? Would you like representation? And he was like, no, I've done this a hundred times. It's like, okay. So I wrote in there an $8,000 credit towards closing cost for my buyer because they needed it. And he called me all pissed off and bent out of shape and said, oh, I, I just, this is BS. I can't believe what, I never saw this. And I said, well, Need to break it to you, but I offered my professional experience, and you said you'd done this a bunch of times, and so that's what's in the contract. You agreed to it, and he's like, "Well, I guess there's no backing out now." And I was like, "Nope, guess there isn't." <laughs> so my buyer got eight grand, and the seller was pretty upset. And I was like, "Well, sorry," <laughs> like, right? So making sure that obviously from the sell side, my the buyer obviously comes along is going to be like. Hey, you want representation? And he might be like, mm, yeah, actually, I think that might be a good idea. Yeah. I mean, he was real bad out of shape. And I was like, I hear you. I feel bad for you. But I'm like, this is why it's my job. And he was like, well, I've done so many times. I don't need a realtor. I was like, okay, well, okay. Like whatever, man. And so I always use that story because it's a perfect example of, yes, I would hope that he has learned his and lesson. I remember using like the mouth and I tried to ride with my left hand all the time. So he said, well, there we go. So anyway, so it's just, it's always a good example that I always like to use to, to make sure that obviously from the sell side that you're explaining it to them um, so that they know, you know, for sure what they're signing um, and you're able to explain it to them well. Um, and then post, so post closed systems. So um I don't know what that is. Oh, contract to close. Sorry. So contract to close. So that is the part, well, obviously, where you are going through the inspection repair or the inspection, uh, going through the repair addendum, um, you know, getting the appraisal, all that stuff. And then post-close systems, 
right, is like I'm actually doing some of this right now is not only just making sure that your systems and processes are in order for the person that you represent after the close, but also to not forget about the, um, they call them an orphan, right? So if an orphan buyer seller, so if you represent the buyer, right, find out where the seller went, right? Make sure to reach out to them. Hey, it's a great house. Hey, if you need anything in the future, I'd love to help you, right? If somebody says, or if you represent the seller, right? That's awesome. Uh, don't forget about that buyer because that buyer, if they want to sell down the road, you want to be the name that pops up for them first. Um, so yeah. So let's see. So far in Ignite, you've prepared yourself to show your leads the value you bring to their real estate journey. Um, you've lead, lead generated, right? You've followed up with those leads and you've qualified them in order uh, to know how your follow-up should be structured. So that's kind of a, a, a piece of it, right? Is everybody wants to be in, involved in real estate. Excuse me. Um, but you got to figure out where they're at in their journey, right? Is it someone who's ready, hot and ready, like all cash, they just won Powerball and they want to buy a house tomorrow and they want to buy like a McMansion? Right. If somebody's like, yeah, I've been thinking about buying within the next five years. <laughs> well, okay. Obviously not that you shouldn't forget about them. You should remember them, obviously, but you can obviously follow up with them to a different level um, where the Powerball winner needs to be, you know, handheld and probably call every 12 hours because <laughs> you don't want to lose that one. Uh, the one in five years, uh, you know, you can be a little more strategic in, in how much time you spend reaching out to them. Okay, let's see. Ahas. Any questions or ahas that you learned so far? Or we can push on. Um, okay, get the appointment. Um, okay, so now we're going to learn about how to convert those um, A sellers to listing appointments so you can win the, win the seller. So, okay. so just like with buyers, right? The keys are converting the, um, the keys are converting the lead to an A seller is obviously right, right. Respond right away to lead inquiries. So when you get a lead, when somebody calls you and says, Hey, been thinking about selling. Um, I actually just got one the other day from the pie giveaway. It's funny because they love their property, but they're like, eh, you know, it's really great. But like, I think we want to be a little bit more out of town and have a little more elbow room on our amount of property that we own. And I was like, okay, well, let's go. Let's figure this out. Right. So they go into a different pile of instead of previously sold where you can uh, kind of follow up, you know, quarterly, you stay in touch. Yeah. Um, this is someone that obviously I'm going to want to follow up to a higher level to make sure that um, we're on the same page that the drip campaign that I'm going to put them on is, um, correct in the uh, information it's giving them that they're looking at the right properties so that when it is time um, in the near future, right, we can we can make that happen quicker. Um, obviously, that we're getting valid and complete contact information. Obviously, we want to save it in command, right, create an opportunity, um, make sure to put on drip campaigns, all that stuff, drip campaigns in RMLS, um, put them on um, uh, smart plans in uh, in command, right? Uh, determine their motivation to sell so that you can speak to it, right? So same thing when I was saying with those buyers or sellers is making sure that, hey, when they do raise their hand and want to engage, making sure that you're speaking the language in which that you're mirroring what their motivation is. So if they're like, hey, we have to buy, you know, in the next 12 months because like the job transfer is happening, they they have to move. They, they're, it's going to happen. Right, if they're kind of just kicking things around, eh, we've been thinking about it. Then obviously you can uh, kind of make sure that you're top of mind when it's time, um, but make sure that you're not hammering them every week and being like, "Hey, are you ready? Are you ready?" Right, because then obviously we don't want to we don't want to <laughs> bury them and frustrate them uh, if you're not doing the same um, level of motivation that they are. And then, of course, set, set an appointment, right? Time and date for as soon as possible and get them a pre-listing packet. So basically, you want to give them, a, give them an idea of, hey, uh, we, even if you want to move or buy in two years or sell in two years, 
let's just have a conversation. Let's sit down. Let's figure this out. If you, if you really do, if it's going to be two years, great. That's totally fine. Um, but, but why is it going to take that long? Is there other reasons? Are there motivating factors? You're waiting for your kids to graduate high school or waiting for your kids to get into school, waiting for a job promotion, right? So that that way you can get in front of them, give them some documentation, get them excited about it by working with you. Um, and then probably most importantly is that you can just really make sure that you're not, I, I don't want to say wasting your time, but um, just making sure that you check them off the box, whether they're an A seller or whether it's going to be a while and you can um, kick that can down the road for a few minutes. Uh, okay. So what sellers want most from their agents, right? So getting an appointment is about letting sellers know that you're going to be their agent that fulfills their needs in the transaction. So what do they want, right? So they want the world, first of all, but you can give it to them <laughs> with the right, with being able to weed through what, what their definition of the world is, right? Um, obviously, you want to price home competitively, right? That's super important. Um, obviously, you want to help them um, help seller market home to potential buyers. So obviously they think that all you do is just slap a side in the yard and walk away and like magically money rains down from heaven, which is not true. But figuring out what, which one of these things they want, um, being able to narrow it down and be able to answer the questions, right? So help sell the home within a specific time frame. Some people don't care. Some people have 12 houses and that's just, I, I had one uh, two years ago and the guy has like, 40 some properties and he, we priced it too high. And I was like, we've got to lower the price. And he's like, oh, the value's there. And I was like, okay, well, I like, we're six months on market. <laughs> so <laughs> unless like, I don't know what to tell you, but, but that would be step one would be lowering the price. He's like, oh no, the price is there. And it just never sold. It expired. It's the first expiring listing I've ever had. So in the situation like that, right? He, there was no time for it. It did, didn't matter. Um, in hindsight, now I know that I should have had different conversations with him. Now I have now changed that conversation um, to make sure that I know 1% better how to have that conversation to make sure that those people that I'm sitting down with that I'm going to list their property aren't just going to use me for the next 12 months to just, you know, maybe get a potential renter. Um, but instead to actually sell the property in, in the in a time frame that makes sense for both of us. Um, help the seller find ways to fix up the home and sell it for more, right? Yes, we can all agree. If you walk up to a driveway and it's disgusting because it has a bunch of, um, if I have a bunch of uh, moss and it's gross and like, you know, it needs a landscape, like, yes, spend a little bit of money. Or for me, I pressure wash, right? Like, be able to have conversations of, hey, maybe they're like dead broke and they have no money and they can't fix anything. Well, then we got to figure out how to just slap some lipstick on it. But if it's something where I had a buyer that was like, or a seller that was like, hey, what do you want me to do? And I go, what do you mean? What do you want me to? I was like, oh, they're just willing to do whatever I ask of them. <laughs> and it was great. They just said, well, I think you need to get a carpet cleaner. You need to car get a carpet stretcher. I think we should have somebody come in and professionally clean it. And they're like, okay, great. Well, you order it and we'll and send us the bill. And I was like, this is wonderful, right? It's like all the things I'm like, I've been waiting for this client, you know, where they take all the advice. Um, and it was a great transaction. So figuring out what that that pain point is, right? Maybe they don't have any money and then you just, you know, do what you can do. Um, and then of course, other, there's always bound to be something else involved um, and just figuring out what that is. Um, so of course, right, just because they don't say it at the beginning doesn't mean they need um, your help with paperwork and negotiations, um, right? 27% of realtors, I mean, sorry, 20%, 27% of sellers use their re realtor previously. So of course they have a fiduciary re relationship um, with that agent. Now, it does say this here on the slide, but that's not always necessarily true. Um, and so making sure that you I've had calls from from sellers who are like, we didn't have a good relationship. I would like to use you. And so making sure that you're figuring out what the issue is. If you can't, if you can't solve that issue because it's an unsolvable situation, 
then sometimes that happens. But if it's like, hey, we just wish that somebody had communicated, you know, once a week versus once a month. I'm like, duh, yeah, got it. I can do that. I can make a call four times that once, right? And so making sure to figure out what their price or their pain point is important. Um, right. The total value you bring to the transaction is what you or sorry, is what will get you repeat business. Right. So these things are important in a first impression. So 100 percent. I was actually just at lunch with an investor and I was telling him I had a client that was all kinds of bent out of shape, like talking about potentially suing me. Like it was this whole I was like physically sick because I cared about this person so much. And I was like, I this is this could be bad, real bad. And the next time I saw her, she was like. Oh yeah, I was just frustrated with like the situation. And it was just that I just happened to be the in-between. And that just where there was a miscommunication, essentially, she just didn't understand some of this, this situation. And so once we basically talked it out, she was like, You're so awesome. Thank you so much. Like, I'm gonna tell my all my friends about you. And I was like, What is happening right now? Like, <laughs> I literally have a voicemail that says, I'm gonna sue you. And I was like, now I'm the I'm like, what? Like, so whatever. Obviously that transaction, what I thought ended very poorly. And I was like, well, that's a five-star review. That's not coming in. I realized now, right? Like all is well, she's happy and likes me again. So sometimes, right. You can make that come full circle and sometimes you can't, but my concern was like, gosh, not only am I, I feel like monetarily that would be annoying to get sued and I would be mad about it because it wasn't my fault, but recognizing that, uh, right? That impression during the transaction. I wanted to make sure that from a business standpoint, I, she chose me again because I just, I care about my clients and I want that to happen again. Right. I want that, that cliche of like realtor for life. That really is true. I really want someone to work with me many times over that lifetime. So, um, just making sure. Yeah. Um, Hey, on the last slide, um, it talked about the pre-listing packet. Yeah. Uh, is that something we could find or is that something we create or can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, I just go like way past what just happened. Sorry. Yeah. Are you talking about this slide right here? Producing packet? Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny, actually. I was going to show you mine. Um, there's, let me, um, I'll show you an example. Okay. okay. I, one second here. Like 9,000 windows and a TV open. So hold on. Um, I have, oops, let's go to the top. So there's kind of two, um, there's a pre-listing packet that kind of just like goes out and it's, it's basically like a, um, sort of like a snapshot, right? It doesn't give any necessarily like specifics about the property. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more of just like, these are the things, um, that I offer. Um, it's sort of like a, it's like a resume, I guess, which is like a terrible example, but, um, I'll show it to you. Okay. Can you see it where it says my face right there? Um, no. Oh, wait, sorry. Hold on. How about now? Oh Yeah. Okay, so so this is actually a work in progress. I'm working on this right now, but for a guide to selling your home. So some of this um, is sorry, I like like I said, a bunch of things going on at once. Um, right, so I can send this out. So I can so I can basically digitally send this out. So it's my name, the phone number, right? Guide to selling your home. A little bit about me, born and raised in Gene. Uh, you know, obviously, want to put my logo, want to put my face, communication. So it's kind of just like, hey, this is what you get working with Matt Kendall. Okay. And then, then we sort of, then the listing presentation is a little bit different. And this is actually, this is actually overkill for this particular one. It's going to get whittled down, but, but the idea is that you can send something out um, before the appointment, right? So it can be like, Hey, I'm not crazy essentially. And like, this is the things that I offer. And then you can really go line by line um, with the person because then they get an idea of being able to read the language in which you speak like, Part of the listing or part of the pre-listing is actually in the listing presentation. So it's like, so they can read it and go, oh, my, my needs always come first, right? Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Oh, cool. 
So now I'm going to be giving you the opportunity to list my property. Um, let's see. Oh, communicate in ways that work for you. Oh, well, I don't need to talk to this realtor guy more than once a week. Okay, great. Matt does that, right? Oh, maybe maybe you really need your handheld and maybe you need a phone call, right? Once a day. That would be a lot, but <laughs> right? Maybe that's what they need and I'm that's fine. I'll make a call five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, then, then that's how it's handled. So it's just sort of a way for them to kind of like read it and digest some of it before you get in front of them. So that way, you know, they have an idea of like, oh, your home needs to be priced right as needed, right? Like, and adjust it as needed. So, so you can sort of, before you walk in there and have to give them this huge big packet where someone's like, oh my gosh, this is a lot, it's overwhelming, right? It gives them a minute to digest it. Um, so that when you show up, they're not just like, oh my God, I'm trying to listen to Matt and read and do all the things all at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, like they don't necessarily need to know that I'm on, well, I guess they do know I'm on TikTok, but like they need, they do need to be able to recognize in writing that like it goes, my listing goes to 350 online searches. It also needs to know that when we, Keller Williams is a partner with Zillow. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so that when our listings go out, and it's my listing, it only shows Matt Kendall on the side. It doesn't show like Ashley or Sandy, right? If you guys paid for leads, it would just show me. Now, if you have a Windermere agent, right? Then yes, you guys' names or whoever paid for it, I guess, would show up on that feed. Um, so you can specifically say, hey, like, not only am I going to market it to everybody, but like the phone calls are going to come just to me so that we can make sure and get you the best deal. Mm -hmm. Um ability track record right marketing craigslist tiktok twitter all that jazz right it talks about the pricing so it's kind of just sort of a precursor so that people can take a look at things and uh and be able to be able to um digest it once you get there so for us being new i don't have this made yet what would the avenue be that i would go to make one for myself i think i stole this to be honest there's um Keller in designs in uh wait what am I sharing with you right now I did the the buyer presentation packet would it be something similar to that I just have to find the list the this one version of that to kind of like yeah update my yeah. information and take out pages and like whatnot just kind of start with a template does that exist yeah. for this yeah like so basically in let's do it really quick uh I think it's like my KW or something. Yeah, I think, don't quote me on this. I think you can actually do it in, in design. I think it's in design. Yeah, and in um, both. Yeah, both places you could download them. Yeah, and then basically you would just take that and then just edit the holy smokes out of it, right? Because I'll give you the template and then basically you would just, mm -hmm. um, I mean, really, even if you search KW command or I mean connect for um, listing presentation, and then basically took the listing presentation and then just cherry picked it for some of the pertinent information that might be, that would basically be confusing or would be um, something that it might take somebody a minute to read, right? And then then you can sort of give them, that's like the summary, right? So the listing presentation is like part inspection report would be the whole thing. And then your, your pre-listing packet could be, just excuse me, just a summary so that people can get a quick read of it. Okay, now you. you still have something to give them in a presentation that they haven't seen before. Like in mine, I always have, I have, um, um, somewhere on the wall. Anyway, I have um, like some flyers from open houses, right? So they don't need to, they just need to know that I'm going to do an open house. But what would be nice is because my listening presentation is bound, in the back, it's like, oh, hey, this was the listing that I had. This is what the marketing, um, so what the thing looks like, what the flyer looks like. Um, and that way it's, you know, out front, easy thing to read. And I don't have to go into deep explanation as to what the um, specifics are about it. Sorry, I'm just getting some feedback, guys. Okay. Okay, so let's see what's next. 
Um, okay. Build confidence and trust. Two things that are definitely important, obviously. Um, yeah, Sandy, yeah, we got that. Okay. Uh, okay. Seven close to appointment tactics. Seven to make sure. Okay. So as you talk to the seller to get the appointment, right? Remember that these conversations lay the foundation for your working relationship. Um, your first goal is to connect. Oh yeah, your first goal in connecting is to build confidence and trust, right? You do that by exuding confidence in yourself, obviously, right? And showing um, attentive professionalism by asking questions, right? So in getting the appointment, right? Your focus during the process is not to sell them on anything. It's to provide value, right? Meet their real estate needs and secure the appointment. So they need to experience what it's like to work with an agent who questions, listens, and cares. Um, so it, it is a very delicate balance, right? Show them what you know, obviously, and also see um, what they would be confident in you. What? Show them what you know and see, oh, why they should be confident uh, in you while not overthinking the conversation by asking too few questions and not showing enough care about the answers. Um, so... I'm trying to think of a good example of this is right. You you want to have conversations with as many people as possible, just as a general statement. Um, coming across salesy versus um, coming from value, right, is kind of a fine line because sometimes it could feel that way, um, where you get excited about the potential of getting a listing or an appointment or just having that contact in general, um, but making sure to not leave the conversation um, without being able to drop a nugget or two in there about real estate so that you then get questions asked of you, of the market and of your career, um, right? So that you can continue to obviously water those seeds so that you can get deals down the road. Um, okay, seven closes to the appointment tactics, right? Show the benefits. Um, there's a take back close, negative positive close. Um, trying to remember the specifics of those ones. Give them what they're looking for, right? Trial close, incentive close, tie downs. Um, are all these there are there are examples, right? Scripting in the packet in your ignite. Is that true? Like, do you guys have examples in your in your um, not paperwork in your uh, PDF that shows what a take back close in it as a, and a negative positive close. We just have this list, not really examples. Um, let's see if there's examples in this thing. We're not just kidding. Um, well, short of telling me to just Google it, which it's not being a very good teacher, guys. <laughs> um, so we always want to give them a value proposition. Um, the same closed appointment tactic you used with buyers work with sellers. There is a is there a participant guide? It says see them in the participant guide. You guys don't have that. I didn't get an email this week for today's thing. There should be. Well, well, we can all have um, Ciara send it out because I'm actually here. Because they're like real specific. Um, I wonder how much of a nerd I am. I have mine from 2017. Um, here we go. All right, so you have different, different. Uh, there's some audio that's happening back there, but it is real choppy. I don't know if anybody else can hear it. Some of the some of the closings are like, um, you know, what's better, what works better for you, uh, five o'clock or six o'clock, right? Versus like, hey Sandy, will you want to have an appointment with me? You know what I mean? So so it's kind of those kind of things where. 
to be totally transparent with you, some of those work and some of them don't work. And not that they just like, don't work like at all. It's just your level of comfort. Like, man, some of those hard closes for me are painful because I'm like, I feel awful saying them because I feel like it's like, hey guys, anybody, you know, it's like the catchphrase of, uh, do you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Yes, that's 100% true. You need to be asking that question, but it's how you ask the question. So, um, so anyway, I don't have, it's not in there either, but um, let's say Google them and, and, we, and you can look those up because um, depending on how you like to word it, as long as it works, right? Like who cares? If you feel comfortable saying, saying uh, if you want to have an appointment at one or three and, and you land a deal, go for it, you know? Um, okay, so questions versus objections. Um, so we've talked a lot about objections right throughout our time at Ignite and addressing objections, yes, is an important part of our job. However, sometimes we need to step back and make sure that we are hearing an objection before addressing it. So responding to every question like an objection, right, can be <laughs> exhausting and may not help you um, to be seen as someone who listens carefully to their clients. Um, so a seller may be asking a question, yeah, the agent hears an objection. So these are two different things and should be definitely responded to in a different way, right? When a question's asked, answer it. When an objection comes up, address it. So right, elephant in the room always is if a client says, what is your commission, right? Just provide your answer. If they ask you if you would work for less, right? You can say, no, I won't, right? Because what's your commission is open-ended depending on obviously the listing and how you structure your business. And will you work for less, right? Then you say, hey, that's a, that's a hard fast. No, I won't, right? It was just a question. If they persist, ask what's stopping them from hiring you today, right? They might say another agent will list my house for, right? Maybe Randy Ansel will sell it for 4% and claim it as full service, right? Where you can respond, right? What I hear about you saying is the commission you pay is important to you. Right. I'm happy to I'm happy that you brought that up, right? You want to validate the question or the concern. Right? I'd love to cover that when we meet. Right. So maybe right over the phone, your value proposition doesn't necessarily have to be 6% versus 4%. Um, because you don't offer the same services. Right. If you're just going to slap it on the RMLS, then sure, maybe it's worth 4%. But if you're going to pressure wash the driveway and talk about staging and you know, like me, offer my truck and trailer be able to move something then yeah yeah i'm going to tell you that six percent is what what i will sell your property for so having those deeper conversations <clears throat> right you can make sure and get the appointment and then have that conversation then and also like we were talking about the pre-listing packet right is going to do <clears throat> is going to um, do a lot of this objection handling um, for you because they're going to go oh wow matt's on twitter matt's on tiktok matt's on a billion social media sites. Wow, Matt does like, um, not drive-bys, door knocking, <laughs> right? Matt door knocks. Like, wow, this guy does a ton of stuff. So then when I go there and I tell them I'm not going to do it for less than 6%, they go, great, sounds good. We've seen your, like, all the things that you're doing, right? So that way you can answer that question before it's asked. Okay, ahas. Anybody have any ahas from that? That they'd like to share with the class. Anybody want me to just hurry up and get through the rest of this? <laughs> See, I like how you um, how you mentioned, you know, like when they ask you, hey, can you work for less? And you're like, no, I won't. <laughs> or, or you know how you how you uh, worded it you know it sounds like commission's important to you um you know like that whole handling that objection i think um for all of us practicing that script and when you get that objection to not fumble about it and not just totally you know belly up and go yeah sure i'll i'll sell your house for whatever um I think that's important. I like that aha, the standard. Yeah. Record, you know, it's no. a really, it, I will tell you, Gary, that is like, I think going to be the most ever present issue for like a while now because 
there are so many people that are getting into the industry willing to do it for less. And there's like a really big um, push that's going to be on like value proposition, myself included, where I'm like, man, every time that I have a listing appointment, I get nervous because I'm like, oh God, someone's going to tell me that they saw Randy's stupid billboard on 105 and be like, well, I'm only going to pay you four. And I say, okay, I fully hear what you're saying. That is important to me as well. My goal is to net you the most amount of money possible. Is it because yes, it's a percentage and technically I do make more. However, the fact that I'm putting forth all of this effort to help create that goes above and beyond anything Randy's willing to do for that lower commission, right? And so obviously, however you want to word it and however that works in your, like if you can land 6% all, all day long forever, go for it, man. And if all you have to do is like smile and say hello and they say yes, cool. Sometimes it's going to take some effort and it's more of just figuring out the best way for you to deliver that information. Um, not just for all of our pocketbooks, but I think as an industry as in general, right? Yeah. Because, because more and more of the ability to look at an industry and say, gosh, do I really need somebody to list the property? Like I literally have one that was a for sale by owner. I, I swear to you guys, like eight houses down from my house right now. And it was listed incredibly high and it was a for sale by owner. And I was like, this lady, bless her heart. She just has no idea. <laughs> and everything that she was telling me, she was like, oh, and we have all this stuff. And I'm like, and I'm just going through the house and I'm like, oh my God, she just doesn't get it. Like, and that's okay. Cause it's not her job. But I was like, it just is not you. You're her, the focus is all over the place. And sure enough, it's with now it's listed, but it's with a discount broker. And it has been reduced, like, I think like four times, it's been on the market like nine months. Oh, and I'm like, I'm like, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but you're doing it wrong. Right. <laughs> right? Like, Do it. and I'm obviously like, I drive by it because it's on my street. And I'm just like, God. And I even have the neighbors telling her that they should work with me. And she's still just like, well, it's, it's going to sell. It's going to sell. I'm like, lady. Right. So sometimes you just won't get that. And that's okay. So my focus has been like, Hey, who do I know that wants to buy? Cause if I can push that marketing, the pictures are bad. Cause they took them with a cell phone, but I'm like, if I can, if, if I can be the person to land the buyer, I can deal the contract with her. That's fine. I like, can have that conversation um, because I already know that she's at least on board at minimum with the two and a half percent for the buy side. So I know that at least it's in our wheelhouse or the other option is once it goes um, not eclipsed, once it goes expired, right? I'm going to be knocking on her door that minute, right? <laughs> I'll be like, Hey, the guy with the pink tailgate who lives four, like eight houses down the drive by twice a week right here. Let's get this thing sold. Stop like camping out because you don't even live in Eugene, you know? So it's those kind of things. I think that <clears throat> really being steadfast and saying, hey, I have value and this is what it is. And being able to use an example like that and say, the value is here. You just have to trust the process. And this is the, these are the reasons why, right? And if they still don't like it, then you're not going to convince them anyway. You can lead a horse to water, right? And then, then you have to make the internal decision. Hey, like, am I willing to do it for less? And then, right, that's, I, I don't want to say a you problem, but that's, that's a you question, right? That you have to figure out, right? Because sometimes it is better to take something versus nothing, right? right. Like, I have a question. Hmm? Sorry to interrupt you. Um, I have, I went to this listing appointment and I have everything set up and everything ready to go and all that. I did the presentation. He said yes and all that stuff. We agree on the price and all that. And then uh, when we came to the point about commission or how he was going to pay and I explained that it was going to be 6% and I disclosed all that, that 6% in title, he was like, mm -hmm. Oh no, you're gonna be you're gonna be making a lot of money out of my property. And I was like, okay. So it took me a while to come back to that statement. And I still I feel like I still like not being able to nail that 
to get a quick comeback and keep the listing. So I went back to the office and two, day, two days later, um, I got the, the text message, oh, we're not ready to sell it. We're going to wait. And I'm like, yeah. So I don't know. Well, sorry, go ahead, Sandy. Is it okay to mention something like, well, 6% isn't all going to be, you know, part of this is to entice buyer agents to bring in good clients yeah. that are going to make yeah. good offers. A hundred percent. And okay. that's, that's probably the thing that I would say most is like, is I think, I think there's a preconceived notion that like, we're all just sitting on like thrones of cash and gold, right? Like, sure. Ryan Surahan sells a $67 million penthouse suite. It's a pretty, pretty nice commission, right? hundred <laughs> percent. There's also someone like me who I sold a manufactured home in a park once one of the first deals I ever did. And I'm pretty sure I lost money on it because I worked for 90 days for like $700. And I was like, hmm, pretty sure I got to deliver newspapers for twice that. So <laughs> right now it got me into a park, got some free market materials for myself to be able to send to the, to the next listing appointment, right? But yes, the I would 100% agree with Sandy that like breaking it down saying yes, so 6% doesn't go to me, first of all. 6% is the whole dollar of commission, right? Then you cut that in half. Now, right, there's a whole different school of thought. Everybody can make their own choice. But a lot of times someone will say, hey, you do 3% on both sides. Some people say, you know, 3% and then 2, two and a half for the buyer. Or you say three and a half. I did one once that was 3.5% for the sell side, 25 for the buy side. So however you want to structure that, but being able to make sure to explain that and say, hey, sure, 6% sounds like a lot of money. I 100% hear you. Now, what I will tell you, for all of the services that I offer, right, like for all the amount of hours that I'm going to be spending on your property, right, during the entire process, the pre-listing process, the coming soon, the active, the open houses, all the way to the close, right, that whole timeline, you can start to basically extrapolate it down and go, okay, First of all, it starts to become less and less per hour when you look at it. Plus, you have a cap you have to pay. Plus, you have taxes. Like once you start to break that down, right? And you look at the end dollar. Sometimes you even have to look at yourself and go, "Man, like, gosh, one hundred ninety-nine thousand dollar listing. Like, right? We can all aspire to get the eight hundred thousand dollar listing, right? But but depending on where that price is, recognizing, hey, yes, that's a lot of money to them, but reminding them, hey. I'm spending all this, I'm, I'm earning this money by making sure to be able to list your property for the highest and best. And to get you the highest and best, that's what my fee is, right? And so then like I was telling Gary, like if there's sort of like some level of fluctuation where you say, hey, you know what, you know, between you and me, I'm willing to do this house for five and a half or whatever, you know what I mean? Like however you want to structure that, but but being steadfast in it and, and being able to show your value, um, it's hard. It's hard for everybody. It's hard for me sometimes where I'm like, gosh, I know this is going to come up. Right. And it depends on the buyer or the seller too. It depends sometimes like those sellers, I said 6% and they just were like, great. And they just did it. Like, it was like, I didn't even have to, I could have written whatever I wanted on there. I could have written 10% and they would have been fine with it. Right. So it depends on what the person's motivation is. Um, and then just be able to make sure to just address that. And the other bottom line is you're just not always going to get all the listings, right? Sometimes people are just, you know, like you said, that they're just not ready to buy now. And maybe it's, maybe it's commission-based, maybe it's something else happened in their life. And just to be able to stay top of mind in their, um, you know, in their headspace, be able to take up that space in their head so that they can remember that um, they want to use you when it is time. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so next is oh, posting Patrick. Okay, purposeful approach. What, doing doing what comes unnatural, right? So your your natural ceiling achievement, right? Going from E to P. I think you guys have probably already seen that one, um, right? That you're gonna go from E to P. Um, what do we mean when we say we need to move from E to P to break through a ceiling of achievement? It's moving from entrepreneurial, right? Doing things doing what comes naturally um to purposeful which is working within proven systems and models to achieve more 
Um, right. So much of what we talked about in Ignite is about learning those models and systems um, to create a business that's large and obviously profitable uh, or as as profitable as you desire. Um, so if you truly, you know, use these models and systems, they work, right? There's teams all over the country using them um, and they can work for you. And of course, you know, you'll likely find that you don't hit the ceiling. Um, uh, let me back it up because that sentence doesn't make sense. If you truly engage these models and systems and work them so they work for you, you will likely find that you don't hit that ceiling anytime soon because you're using the models that work at a high level. Um, so everything from the pre-listing packet to the consultation checklist um, <clears throat> and the listing presentation have been created for you based on the success of um, yeah, innumerable agents. There's agent, thousands of agents all over the country that have made these things. And yeah, so it does look like it is available in command designs. Um, so there's kind of, you know, templates that you can use. Um, so the pre-listing packet, right? So the goal of this is obviously build the seller's confidence, answer their questions and objections, um, right? They, before you give your presentation, right? So they have something to look at and read, digest. Um, sellers use an agent because they need advice and expertise, right? Making them feel like they better understand the process is important to your value proposition. So one of the things that I have, right, that I just got from Breakthrough Broker is, right, it's called the Seller Roadmap. All right, so this goes to every person, right? Real generic, there's probably a billion agents out there using the same thing as I am, but it works because it's literally like, when actually there's actual arrows and it just goes down the process so that I can explain it super easy and they have a visual that they can look at and go, oh, I know that once we list, Excuse me, once you list that for sale, what's the next step? The next step is showings. Okay, cool. What happens after showings? Oh, we get an offer, right? So it's very like idiot proof, but at least it gives them something to digest. And then when we have the conversation, then obviously, you know, we can kind of buzz through a little quicker, right? It saves time. Um, a strong pre listing packet will make uh, the consultation experience smoother and likely shorter by tackling common obstacles. State your value, right? So it has some of that information. Like I said, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, open houses, all that stuff. Um, listing packet tells the seller what, what you bring to them and their transaction. Remember, sellers have specific goals they intend to achieve. And it's a crucial step in discovering their goals by telling them how you'll help achieve them. Um, Oh, perfect. I know, right? Those roadmaps are so great. I got mine through Breakthrough Broker. There's another one, I think. I can't remember, but I over the years, there's been several different ones, but they're great. And like for me, for sure, right? You can put your headshot on these things. I put my logo at the bottom. I mean, you can make them all different kinds of sizes where you can even just put them on Instagram. I mean, yeah. I mean, the world is like your oyster with some of that stuff. Uh, hold on just a second. No, no, no. Can you guys see it? Hold on. Hold on, guys. Give me just a second. I'm going to try that again. That was weird. It just shut off on me. Sorry, just a second. Awkward, sorry, hold on, just a minute. Okay. Yes. And yeah, that's again. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Can you see it again? Okay. Good. Okay. One second.
Okay. Good. Sorry, guys. Hold one second. I don't know why it's doing this all weird, but we'll get there. Promise. Okay. So for right now, we'll just do this. Um, okay. So for listing, show your values. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Does the so this set of materials communicates right the, your professionalism and value. Each piece of information included should fill one of the following criteria. Right. Will you review it in the listing presentation? Right. Does it eliminate the need for a listing presentation? And is it a primer for uh, education you will provide at the listing consultation? So that way, you know, yes, we're going to go into it. Yes, we're not going to go into it. Like, however you want to structure your, your um, packet. Yeah, so see, there is going to be a so page industry resource. So right, the custom consultation exclusively. This one's actually a little cleaner than mine is, but um, right, you can make up your own. You can put the KW logo. You can put your logo if you have one there. Um, and also, it's just a good piece of marketing to leave with them, right? Because you give it to them, and then they're able to, you know, look at it and tell their friends when their friends come over and go, oh, cool, what's that thing? Oh, we're thinking about selling our house. Oh, who's that guy? Oh, Matt? Oh, cool. Um. Uh, okay, so we'll talk more about the pre-listing packet. As we talk about the listing presentation, you should think about the pre-listing packet according to three criteria we just discussed. Uh, the pre-listing packet helps the seller to get ready to understand and accept your plan for their home by providing them with the general information on selling a home, right? So you should keep the pre-listing packet to less than 10 pages if possible. Perfect. Some key items for your listing packet, right? Cover page, right? Contact information. Sorry, right there, you know. Oh, sorry, we just found that page ad. Um, selling process overview, right? So that's like with this thing, right? Throw this guy in there. Value proposition, um, if you have any metrics. So sometimes one of the, one a great piece of advice that I got right when I first started is I was like, like, oh yeah, tell how many homes you've sold. And I'm like, cool, zero. How am I gonna like tell you that I'm the greatest realtor? Well, you can say it, but the proof's in the pudding, right? If there's no sales, how do you, what do you back that up with, right? So what you can do is use market statistics, right? So Keller Williams, Eugene Springfield has closed X number of properties last month. You know, my office has done this volume last year. Uh, the, the market share, right? Of, of every property listed, 61% of, uh, of those listings are with Keller Williams, right? You can use some of those statistics obviously until like you get your own and then, you know, then you can obviously use those, but um, at least that way you can kind of, I wouldn't say cheat, but kind of just hack the system and say, Hey, you know, you don't have to walk out and be like, this is my first deal. Right. But you can, <laughs> you can at least say, Hey, I've got a lot of people um, backing me. And I think a really big piece for me, for my first one was, yeah, I didn't have client testimonials. I didn't have any sales. What was I going to explain to somebody? I was going to say, well, Here's the thing. There are a lot of things that come up during this transaction. And I was at least able to speak from experience because I owned a property. I already owned a property, but I would say, hey, I know what it's like to go through this process. Yeah, it's like, it's it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things that we need to cover. And if during the process, there's an issue that comes up that I don't, I can't immediately personally solve. There's 150 agents in my office. I don't know if you want to say that necessarily, but there are, I have a wealth of people supporting me that I can gather that information from if that situation so to where were to present itself, right? So you're always talking about, yes, you're going to do the best. Yes, you know all the things, but if in case you don't know, there are people that that can be able to help. Um, right, client testimonials, um, previous listings, ancillary services. So some of this stuff, right? Color mortgage, color covered, excuse me, color offers, right? So <clears throat> like with all the other documents, Obviously, we need to make sure they're error-free, well-organized, well-written, presented on good quality paper, right? So that's why I go to Office Depot and I have them bound. Um, they're clean. They're a nice folder, right? We've got folders. Um, you're just making sure it's presentable. Now, with that being said, remember, you also want to cater to your audience to some degree, right? Like, you probably wouldn't want to roll up in, like, you know, 
four inch heels and a ball gown to like a farm property because it would be weird. But also I would say probably not wear Romeos to Spring Boulevard, right? <laughs> like there is that mirror and match, right? <clears throat> um, okay, subtle consultation preparation checklist. So, right, you want to deliver your pre listing packet, right? Confirm the appointment, time and location, right? Ensure all decision makers are attending. This is a big one, right? So if there are, if it's, um, what's a good example? So if it's like a husband and wife, great. If it's whatever, single married, I don't care. Uh, make sure that people are present. If there's like kids, right? So here's a tricky one. Mom dies, dad dies, whatever. And there's, there's three kids. Don't go to an appointment with only one of the kids. I mean, yes, you are going to need to talk to that person, but make sure that all the decision makers, if there's two other kids and they live in, in um, you know, one lives in New York and one lives in Texas. Okay, well, make sure that that call then is with me here, the person in Oregon there, and then the two people on Zoom so that we can all have a conversation at the same time. So they're all on the same page and there's you're not doing the same appointment three times. Because that's a really big deal <laughs> if you get somebody that pops up out of the woodwork. Um, <clears throat> complete and practice your listing presentation, right? So obviously you wrote it. So, so you're going to know the information in it and just make sure that it, that it, that the flow is correct. Um, and then when you're able to explain it, um, it's not in a weird order, right? Where, where you're talking about, you know, you know, the closing costs at the beginning, because nobody cares. We don't even know how we got there. Right. Um, so you want to obviously make it easy to understand for the seller, but also easy for you to explain to them. Um, review the lead sheet, which I don't know what that is. Go over the lead sheet right before the constitution the seller's profile and goal or clear your mind. Oh, sorry. So lead sheet, right? So your note sheet. So I have a, um, like a buyer's intake form right here, right? So, or sorry, seller intake form. So when I give this out, Right, sales checklist. So I can say, okay, cool. So what is the name? What's the address? Um, you know, what are they looking to do? That's the sales checklist. But anyway, you get the idea. Is that basically when you're intaking them, you figure out what their motivation is. And then you can basically look at that, sit in your car and look at it and go, okay, Sandy really wants to move to five acres. And she wants, she, she already has taken delivery of 10 cows that are out in the field right now. We got to hurry up and get this house sold to get her out to the country. Okay, that needs to be your point of focus when you walk in that door, right? How do we get this thing sold yesterday? Um, <clears throat> right, so arrive to the listing presentation in a professional manner, right? On time, dressed appropriately, right? Consider the quality of your materials. Same thing, cleanliness in your vehicle, if applicable, um, as an extension of your reputation, reputation and image, which remember, also don't get wrapped up in this because I've heard it agents say this and i was 100 guilty of this too you don't need a mercedes to go sell a house somewhere what you really need and what's most important is making sure that you are clear and present um with the information that you are delivering to them like so many times someone's been like oh man should i go buy a brand new vehicle I'm like, mm, i mean if you have the money to do it great but like if you if you can just be presentable, right? Yes, maybe wash your car if you're going up to like Spring Boulevard. But like, never has somebody been like, well, I would work with you, but your truck is a little muddy. <laughs> so not going to happen this time, right? I actually showed a property and people were actually more excited to work with me because the property that I was looking at or that they were looking at was like up a hill. And I was the only truck up there. It was me and one other full-size truck because I put it in four low and literally climbed up this muddy driveway that, that three other cars had parked their little cars at the bottom of the hill. And I four wheel drived up to the top and dropped my client off at the top. And they were like, wow, I'm really appreciative that you had this truck. And I was like, okay, well, yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you know? So that's definitely not as important as all the social medias will tell you that it is. Um, okay. Ahas. Anything that I say help you during that last period? Okay, let's go to listing appointments. 
Okay. Get a signed listening agreement. Do you guys, you guys all have listening agreements, right? Like, um, we were going over, <clears throat> let me see if I can do this. Let me show you one. But you've already gone over the contracts, right? <clears throat> like that's part of, okay. So I don't need to show you a listing contract. Okay. Um, okay, so get it signed. Oh, actually, here, here's a here's a fun one. So sometimes, and I will tell you, I am guilty of this. I've been guilty of this a couple of times, is I will tell the person, hey, because I get nervous, and like anybody does, sometimes when you go to a listing appointment, you just don't want to be overly pushy, and sometimes it can backfire. It's backfired at least once for me. And it's a valuable lesson was, I don't, what, what we can do in the listing, uh, in the listing um, agreement is, can you see it now? Is it on there? Okay. Is like this active listing thing. So instead of, in fact, right when I first got licensed, they were like, oh yeah, you have to make sure and put the date and don't screw it up. Like there's a lot of pressure. And I, the one that I just like two or three deals ago, I filled this whole thing out with just TBAs or TBDs. And I was like, yeah, we don't know when it's going to be, when the marketing is going to start, because I don't know, because we still have to get mom's furniture out. I got a pressure wash. We got to do all these things. Like there's a laundry list. So we just said, yes, it's going to be coming soon. Boom, TBD. We went down the price. I didn't know because the market was shifting in like May and everybody was all over the place. So I said, TBD, do I think I know what the price is? Sure, kind of, but, but we know that we're not going to list for 30 days. The market's going to change, right? So some of the important things, right? You, we just decided, yes, I definitely wanted the 6% broker fee. Great. 100% goes to the seller who falls out of escrow. Some of those things that you can have the conversation with and say, hey, if you decide, hey, Matt's hair is ugly and I don't want to work with him anymore. And what, what you really meant to say was the neighbor walked over here with cash and said, I don't want to work with your realtor. Then I'm going to make sure and put some dates in there, right? That like still marries you to work in with me. And if, it, and if you decide that you aren't going to work with me, you still got to pay my commission if you decide to run off and break contract, right? So some of those things, you can sort of talk them down while still walking out with the signed listing agreement. And even if it's not for an immediate date, at least you can feel good knowing, hey, it's to be determined. And that buys you some time to make better decisions as to what the price is or what the condition is or whatever. Um, but at least you walk out of there with something signed. And that's nine times out of 10, that makes all the difference in the world. Um, all right, so you can still have to put your information. And then, of course, that also gives you an opportunity right to the data input form, which you guys have all seen this too, or no? Haven't seen that one yet from RMLS. So basically, this is just like the RMLS data input. So once you decide you want to, that you have a listing, like let's say, Sandy, you call me and you're like, Matt, I want to list your property. Am I cool? And you show up and you say, okay, you know, Matt lives in area XYZ. The price is going to be 200,000 you know, whatever legal. And you just basically go all the way down. It's like each page is different, right? Bedrooms. Oh, it's got a third bedroom. Oh, it's got closets. It's got a gourmet kitchen. It's got a jetted tub, right? So you just check off those boxes and then you can put that later into MLS. Okay. Okay. Back to this. Okay. So create a great impression, right? To build the seller's confidence. Uh, and you as a real estate agent, right? So that's that nice thing where you obviously have already given them the pre-listing and you're already, they're already feeling good about you. Um, so they're going to already want to sign that, right? Share your price recommendation, right? The initial list price for their property and your reason behind it. Uh, and then of course, set expectations for how you'll market the home and work with sellers. Um, and then of course, depending on, you know, with that property, I put the prices to be, to be determined um, because we were in a really weird time where I was like, I don't know what the value is. I said, I know the value is today. I don't know what the value is going to be like in a month because the interest rates were all over the place. Houses, everything got weird. It just got weird all at the same time. And so I didn't, I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I know what it's valued at today, but by the time that the um, we want to list the property, 
what I'm going to tell you is I think that we should pick a price about a week before we go live. I said, that, that, that's my advice. I said, I, I know that sounds weird, but I'll tell you that the house next door has been sitting on the market for a month, over a month, and it's had two price reductions. So do you want to go with that number and just hope that that's right? Or do you want to go back and reassess things a week before we list? And I said, reassess. Thank you for being honest. I said, I'll list it for whatever. I would, I would think it's probably going to, I think we could probably list it for more. But do you want to list it and then have it sit on the market forever? Nobody wants that. It's, that's, that like literally defeats the purpose, right? So being honest, I think, not I think, is always helpful. But in a situation like this where you're trying to get a listing, um, just shows that you're willing to um, go the extra mile to understand um, understand what their needs are uh, and also make sure that they know that you're looking out for their best interest. Um, okay. Da -da -da. Just like the buyer's packet, you don't have to figure this out for yourself, right? There's a bunch of stuff in command. Um, okay. How the listing presentation meets seller's needs and wants. So review the following help article. Um, okay. Show them how to find design, listing presentations and design. So let's do it. Um, I will. And if you guys are all on a laptop, you can do this at the same time with me um, in design. So basically, you just need to go into command. Um, go into command. Okay. Go into designs and I think these are my designs. So listing, listing didn't work. So we're going to import design. We're going to go to a template. <clears throat> I can do listings, listing presentation. Bam! Look at that. So you get all kinds of presentations. So you can do that one. Um, let's, make sure. let's just do this. I'll just make one real quick, like a really fast thirty-second version. Because obviously some of this is going to be. Uh, oh, it's 29 pages. Is it a good so, idea to upload a couple of pictures from your initial meeting with them? Of the property? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, so, so. Yes, the answer to that is yes. A lot of times I will um, like go and steal. I'll just show you one real quick. In fact, I did this. I did this on uh, when I was first. No, that's not what you want. Um, I didn't take a picture of the front of the house for whatever reason. And <clears throat> what was funny is, is I took it and I... Uh, cropped out, so I took the street view, right? So basically, I would go like, well, it's a bad example because it's a weird house, but here you go. So I would take this house, right? And I would go, like, take a screenshot, right? So highlight it, bam. And then I would take that picture. For me, I take it, I take that picture, I put it into Canva, I remove the background, I put a, like a beautiful, you know, like sunset or whatever behind it. And then at that point, then I take that picture and then I slap it in here. So if I'm, so if like, 
for this listing presentation, if, if it's, you know, for this, then I would put that picture right there. So when they open the presentation, they go, oh, wow, like, hmm, that's my house. And I go, yeah, it is. And it, and it takes literally five minutes, right? But the idea that it can be personalized um, just kicks it up a notch, right? And then each one of these, obviously, you just would like copy and paste and then just change that picture each time. Um, but at least then you have the opportunity to be able to edit all of these. Um, and because each one has pictures, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, see, so there you go. Now this one, I don't know if they're trying to insinuate that this is the property that's around the area. Oh, maybe this is like a just sold in the neighborhood, right? So, oh, well, maybe it's not. Look, your home is 10% larger than the average property. So this one's a little more in depth, right? So you would have to do the research to figure out, hey, if you're going over to whatever this was, 2140 Rocky Lane, right? Be able to go into our lid, look up the details, look it up on RMLS, um, see what it was sold for last time, right? So even just the fact that you know that information, right? Literally right out of the gate, they go, oh, wow, they, this person's done their research. Right now, maybe it takes you 30 minutes, but um, but being able to customize that particular listing presentation versus just getting one that looks the same for everybody um, can set you apart. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Show. Oh, can you see the guy and the lady? Okay. Um. Okay, so do okay, so flip back to the chart. So, so we want um, flip back to our chart on the what sellers want. Well, it's just look at the activity in your, Do you have a person participant guide, and it has go. It says go through the listing presentation and command. Okay, we can skip this actually. This is get into groups. You don't need to go into groups. Um, because then we'd have to do breakout rooms and you don't need to do that unnecessary. But yes, definitely go into the guide in command and 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 make up a listing presentation because with all those great templates, that's slam dunk. Uh okay. Okay, your needs. Your needs right here. Okay. Why is this page essential? Because the client needs to know that their, their needs and desires to get their home sold for the highest price is your also paramount now new need as well, right? So it's included because it's super important that they know that it is your is on the top of your priority list to do whatever those things that they need are, right? At the end of the day, the real estate business is a relationship. This part of your listing presentation is every relationship, right? It's important. Doing this piece will go a very long way in earning their current and future business, right? <clears throat> when you present your listing presentation, get ready to take notes, right? I always bring notepad, always be able to make sure to have something to write with, something for them to write with too, um, right? Want to visualize the dream scenario for selling your home. What's the one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, what's the one thing that has to happen to make that dream scenario a reality? How can I make that happen for you, right? It's like that that question earlier where it's like, do I need to call every week? Do I need to call every month? Do I need to call every hour and a half? Um, why is that important to you? Um, if we could add one more thing to this process, even better, what would it be? So you, you're going through your listening presentation. Hey, these are all the things that are going to need to happen. What's something that I missed? Like you tell me what the what the you know chink in the armor is. You tell me what's missing. Oh, you really need a text at night at six o'clock? Fine, automate a text. Great, I'll send it to you every night, right? Um, right, what will the answers to this question tell you? <clears throat> right, may include how to earn and keep their business, how to be an agent they recommend to their friends and family, 
right? That's a huge piece, right? Yes, you're going to sell their house, but do you want to be the person they talk smack about down the road? No, you want them to tell everybody under the sun that you're the greatest realtor because of the way that you treated them during their process. Um, right. And then of course, how to adapt your marketing. I mean, how to, how to adapt your approach to marketing and selling their home. Um, right. Sometimes based on the demographic, it's not best for it to be on TikTok. You know, shocker. Not everybody's on TikTok. Not everybody's on Twitter. Not everybody's on Facebook, right? To be able to hit the avenues that you know that they are going to like, as well as the, the avenues that are going to like, that are, that are going to be helpful in selling that property. Right. Maybe they are on Facebook every day, all day long. Then you, you better have a post on there that talks about the property. Otherwise, they're going to ask a lot of questions. Right. Maybe they still receive the register card. Okay. Well, that's a smaller and smaller demographic, but maybe it means you take an ad on the, out in the paper right now. Whether that's a good use of money or not is to be determined, but right. Having that conversation and recognizing that that might be something that they would like, um, even if you don't do it, as long as you're, as long as you're bringing it to their attention, then you can answer that question before it's asked. I uh, when I had my listing in Junction City, I had a, like a just listed or a, a price improvement um, postcard that I mailed out to the neighborhood, to like a hundred houses in their surrounding in surrounding their house in their neighborhood and i made sure they got one yeah their house 100 so they, and they're like oh so you are doing marketing for this yeah so just showed yeah. that i was doing what i said i was gonna do yep yep and that's the that's the funny one too i right when i first got licensed i used to send out postcards and i we're now doing we're bringing that back but i had a neighbor that i hadn't talked to forever like i think i might have talked to her I don't know, three times in like two years. And she literally lives next door. I kid you not. So I sent out a postcard and it was like real generic. It literally was like something to the effect of like, happy Thanksgiving, hope you and your family, blah, blah, blah. And then on the backside, it says like, if you're thinking about buying or selling, you know, love to help you. She calls me and I swear to you, we talked for 45 minutes. I've never talked to that woman in my life a tenth of that amount of time combined. And she was like, hey, we're not looking to sell. Um, actually, my daughter and my son are going to get the house. But like, you guys are so great, like blah, 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 blah. And like, I was like, what is happening right now? And I literally talked to her like at, in my own house on my phone to this neighbor 45 minutes. And now we wave at each other every day. Like, and I'm like, okay, so right. Some of those marketing pieces, I never would have got her on TikTok. I never would have got her on Instagram. But that postcard, like that hit her, that pressed her button where she picked up the phone after looking at my face and phone number and wanted to dial me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes even it isn't necessarily the thing that you would do, right? It's what's doing best for those clients particularly. And who knows, that could be a referral for later. 100%. I mean, right. You never know. And where is she moving to? Maybe she's moving out of state. Maybe she's moving in. She's probably going to move to an assisted care facility, which is fine. But like, then maybe the kids go, hey, great. Mom's like in assisted living. Now we can have the house. And then they go, eh, I don't really want a house. We already own a house. What do we do? Hopefully they will have looked across the fence and seen me, but right. <laughs> like planting seeds, right? Um, right. So here is a good phrase. I am knowledgeable and caring and the best agent for these clients, right? This is a um, affirmation. So they'll appreciate my expertise and preparation and choose me to represent them as they sell their home. Um, okay. We use this a lot. Um, Okay, so opportunities, right? We want to use opportunities. Listing presentation is where you show off your hard work and research and get the listing. In addition to going through the listing presentation, you'll want to preview the home or you'll preview the home and then ask for a listing agreement, right? And then of course, working in command or working at KW, right? If you want to get paid, you have to make sure and use command. So you want to always make sure to put it into, um, what you call it, opportunities. Um, so you can track where it's at, where it's at in the process, all that good stuff. Um, okay, listing walkthrough. So, excuse me, sorry guys. 
when you arrive to the potential seller's home, right, it's important to establish yourself as a knowledgeable professional right away. Greet your clients, thank them for the opportunity. Ask them if you can leave your things in the kitchen while you do a walk through the home. Now, this next paragraph, so it's also a good idea to compliment something you like about the home, which is true, right? Unless you're literally listing like a hoarder's house that's, I mean, even in a hoarder's house, you can go out, it's got a lot of space for things, right? You can come up with something. Um, this is your client's home after all, right? So both being careful in how you have the conversation, but also being practical and saying, hey, I need to look at this through a neutral lens, whether I think that a hot pink wall is awesome or not. Somebody's going to walk through and say it's their dream home. Somebody's going to walk through inevitably and call it a dumpster fire. You're going to get the whole, you're going to get the whole thing. It's going to happen. It's happened. It's happened from the buy side. And they go, God, this house is hideous. But, right, my first house was teal. And I don't mean teal, like pretty turquoise teal. Like it was like the most ugliest color of teal I've ever seen. And my wife, at the, t- not at the time, we were married. We just got married and we bought this house and we had walked in, we were shopping and she's like, oh my God, honey, this is the one. And I was like, you are high as a kite. This is awful, right? So somebody's going to come in and say they love it. Someone's going to say they hate it. Sometimes they're in the same relationship and then you get both that fun conversation. Um, anyway, we ended up buying it and made money off it. So, hey, you know. Um, but but recognize that they they live there and and you still want to be obviously respectful and complimentary, even if it's not a 10, right? Um, so why do you think, you know, if someone says, hey, you know, they're proud of it. So a compliment isn't just kind of shows that you see value in their home, um, right? So they're gonna say, like, hey, why do you think we suggest, you know, do we leave things in the kitchen? The table provide the table provides a great space to talk. Right, you can sort of be able to go through that conversation as as you're walking through the property. Hey, maybe they have like nine recliners in one room. Hey, guys, whittle it down to two. Get rid of the other seven. Right? Maybe they have a ten thousand pictures of their kids on the wall. Great, kids are awesome. I got two of them. We don't need a thousand pictures on the wall. Maybe a family picture, and then maybe like a pretty piece of art. But let's you know sort of dial things down as you go through the property. Um. Right. And then, of course, as you're doing that, you're obviously taking notes and then obviously also putting them in that sheet that I showed you earlier on the listing for the RMLS so that you can um, have the checklist, you know, talking about some of those like bones of it, like does it have a, you know, does it have a hot tub? Does it have a pergola? Does it have HVAC? Does it have, you know, whatever. As you can put it in a data input format. Um walk through and then a handwritten note right so it's nice after you're done right a little piece of uh just a little token of appreciation right go go down to um shoot you go to walmart and buy just a box of thank you cards and just send it to them afterwards right hey whether you got the listing or not you you are still kind you're not obviously going anywhere and you still want their business in the future if it's so you know if the opportunity presents itself um and to be able to send a, uh, a little card to them just shows that you still care. Um, right, yeah, it shows gratitude. Um, as showing gratitude does at, as at least as much good for you as the person you're showing it to. When when or lose a listing, you've gained it from the experience. Um, sorry, guys, we're going to try and buzz to this. I know we only have a few minutes left. Uh, ahas. Okay. Listing agreement. Um, okay, so we want to get it. We want to get the listing agreement. We want to get it signed. Um, you guys have listing agreements. Oh, well, this is go over them. But you saw that. You guys see that listing agreement before, and you can get it on. Um, here, do you want me to show? You want to go through it, guys? Or have you already? You do you want to go through it? Okay, we can go through it real quick. Some of it, and it's funny actually. I tell, um, I tell uh, uh, sellers sometimes. I'm like, here's the deal. Some of this is I need you to just follow the law. Can you follow the law? And they go, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I go, great. We know we can skip this whole page. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like, some of it is literally like, how much are you gonna charge? When's it gonna go live? How much am I getting paid? And will you please follow the law? And they go. Huh. 
Sounds good. Like, yeah, that's, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> so if you tell me if you need me to slow down at all, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to chime in. Right. So address at the top, right? So agency. So this is basically just says that they've received the initial agency broker, broker uh, oh, uh, pamphlet, right? So you want to get these, right? So I always give these out. Um, there's a link. If you just go to the Oregon, actually, if you just look up Oregon initial agency disclosure packet or pamphlet, um, I literally just went to the website and printed them out. And then I have them in the packet ready to go. Um, and all it is essentially is it just explains the difference between seller's agent, buyer's agent, and disclosed limited agent, which is right, sell side, buy side, and then disclosed as both. Um, which everyone has their own feelings on dual agency, but um, personally, I like to just pick a side. And then if there's an opportunity to do well, then I just refer it out. Um, exclusive right to sell. So that just means, hey, that Kendall is the listing agent, and I'm I'm the one who's selling it. Um, active listing, right? So active, obviously, that's the marketing is to begin on that day. It's going to go live on such and such a date coming soon, right? So coming soon goes on the, on the MLS, um, but then you get 21 days, right? So, you, so it's like a little window. So that's where you put the picture out there. Other realtors can see it, right? Everybody in this chat, we can go on our MLS right now, look up, look up coming soon. Um, but the general public obviously won't see it like on Zillow and all those sites. Um, excluded from MLS. So that one is kind of like, let's pretend you're Bill Gates. And let's say you want me to sell your property, but you don't really want the whole world to know the Bill Gates. Actually, Tom Brady is probably a better example right now, right? Tom Brady is going through his whole thing with Giselle. He probably doesn't want everybody on the planet to know that it's Tom Brady, right? Who's getting rid of his property. So we check that box. And then basically, yes, I am still going to get my commission. Yes, I'm still going to represent Tom. But the whole world doesn't know it doesn't need to be going on MLS. I can basically just then call up Ashley and go, hey, Ashley, quarterback for the Niners. He wants to buy the house. Great. Sandy, who you know? Oh, you know this guy that won Powerball? Cool. Well, let's do the deal, right? Um, yes, list price, right? 400000 So that's where you pick the number. Um, term, right? So typically, right? My example, I usually do a six month term. So if I can't list, if I can get the property sold in six months, either I'm failing or the seller is unreasonable because there's no reason I should have anything ever sit on the market for six months unless, like that one that I had, <laughs> sat for a year uh, because the seller just it just was never going to happen. And it was a, that particular deal was a learning curve or a learning lesson for me. Um, so that one just didn't happen. Brokerage fee, right? Making sure to write, put the right percentage. Yes, this is for the total amount, right? And then that way you can either do a percentage or if it's a property. So that that um, manufactured home that I did, that first deal or second deal, whatever, ever, we didn't do a percentage because the percentage would have been like nothing. So I ended up selling it for $1,500, just a flat fee because the whole house was $25,000. So 3% wasn't going to work. Um, so I wanted to make sure and get a, a dollar amount, All right? Disbursement. Um, obviously everybody can do whatever they want with this one, but I like hundred percent that goes to the seller. So that's if like, I have a listing, Sandy, you bring your buyer and your buyer decides they don't want it at the last minute and they lose their earnest money. That earnest money doesn't go to me. It should go to the seller, right? Because I didn't do anything for it. I just, you decided you didn't want it. <laughs> so Seller needs to get that. Uh, insufficient proceeds, no matter what, you still have to pay the realtor, right, to compensation, right? So if you decide you want to cheat on me with a neighbor, up to 90 days after I list this property, you still have to pay me. Um, authority, so yes, legally you're allowed to um, sell the property, right? You got to give me a key. Um Right now, there is one that's to accept deposits on seller's behalf. I don't, I don't deal with anybody's money. If you're going to give me money, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell you that you need to take care of your own funds. Um, lockbox, obviously, yes. Internet, yes. Uh, but again, sometimes, right? Sellers don't feel comfortable with showings, 
maybe Ashley, right? Maybe you have a little kid in the house and you're like, eh, I don't really want to have the lockbox out front. Not that you're actually fearful that someone's going to open the lockbox unannounced, but you're like, eh, I'd still like to just cover my bet or cover my bases and just do showings on Saturdays and Sundays because we're going to go to the coast. Awesome. Great. I can be there, I guess, from 8 a.m. in the morning till 8 a.m. at night on Saturday and Sunday doing a 12-hour open house if I know that that is the time that you're comfortable listing your property. Um, so just making sure to cover that with them, right? Internet, obviously, same thing. Maybe Tom Brady doesn't want a picture of, like, you know, whatever, of his, like, trophy room. Then, fine, we don't put it on the internet, which, you know, these days would be dumb, but um, sometimes people want that privacy, and that's okay. Uh, indemnity, right? So making sure that the seller is not going to obviously, you know, hold the broker liable for things. Um, that are caused by the seller, right? Attorney fees, making sure that, hey, if there's an issue, right? Who pays for the attorney fees? Dispute resolution, making sure that if, as long as we all can get along and you can follow the rules, um, then we're good. And if not, then obviously we have to, and the association of realtors is going to bring in a mediator, right? It's going to turn in messy. So just follow the law, right? That whole page, I always tell people, I'm like, if you can just follow the law and not fight with me, we're good. Uh, compliance with the law, follow the law, right? Uh, if a uh, if somebody comes in who's a woman and a man says, oh, I'm only going to sell this house to men, idiot. No, that's not legal. Shocker, right? Like, but I've heard it. Let me tell you over the years. Well, I'm not going to sell it to such and such. Okay, um, you can't say that, sir, uh, but I hear you. And uh, that's illegal for me to say that. Uh, so... <laughs> We're going to need to come up with a new plan now, <laughs> or hey, maybe I'm just not the agent for you because that's incredibly not okay for me to even like know that information, you know? So obviously making sure that we're following the law. So there's property disclosure, right? So that's like seven pages and you basically hand it to them and then they go, go through it. It's itemized, um, right? Making sure that they know, um, you know, that they have legal ability to sell, is the roof in good condition? Yes. Has there been a leak? Yes or no? Oh, yes. When? Like, basically just goes through all those things and make sure. Uh, detectors, obviously, every house has to have smoke detector and carbon monoxide. Um, right. Sell representation and warranties. This is the seller says, hey, yes, I am the legal owner. And yes, I have the ability to sell this property. Um, FERPTA. It's fantastic. So back in the day. The elevator version of this is back in the day, you used to be able to, let's say, live in Canada and be a Canadian citizen. And you would come up, you know, jump over the border and buy a million dollars in real estate and then sell it for five million and then take your four million dollar profit and just walk back over to Canada. And thanks, America. Now, according to this, America's like, hold up, you just made four million dollars. Uh, we're going to need our taxes out of that. <laughs> so you can't do that anymore. Um, they essentially closed that loophole and they want to make sure that everybody. Um, you know, pays their taxes when they sell property. Um, okay, additional provisions. So if for whatever reason, uh, you know, um, I've only used this like a couple of times, I guess it would be like if you uh, want to make sure that the seller, um, I can't even think of a good example. It would be something like if it was specific to the deal and the seller desperately wanted it, um, then you would include it. Like, like so usually I put an American flag on the house uh, just because it's just great for the, it always looks good. It's photogenic. And, and so if for some reason they said, hey, we absolutely do not want an American flag or, hey, we definitely do want an American flag and they wanted it in writing, then you would put it on there. Um, and then, of course, the rest of this is pretty easy, just like the broker's information. Right. The principal broker's information, which is Tom Dye. Excuse me, seller information, one, two. Or if there's um, an attorney involved, or not an attorney, but a legal representative that has power of attorney, maybe put them there. And then data input form. This one's like pretty long, but basically you literally go line by line. And some of these, if you have questions too, guys, I would say go to RMLS and literally just, you can, 
look up the specifics on here. And as you, like, you can just basically do a fake listing and just start to kind of create one in the draft. And then you can kind of see each little box because I know they edit this every once in a while. Um, right, private remarks, public remarks, how many baths, right? All the stuff, kitchen doesn't have a downdraft or the pantry, all that stuff. Okay, we good on that? Sorry, guys, I know we are now six minutes over, so. Uh, hey, Matt. Yeah. So are the private remarks just like for the agent to know and then share with whoever they're showing the house to? Yes, so. Because I showed a house for the first time, not realizing mm -hmm. that, because I was like, oh, and it has that buried oil tank. And they're like, oh, it does? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. A lot of times that, like, um, actually, hang on, I'll just show you. So, like, the, um, hold on, sorry. I'm actually not interested in this, but I'll just do it. Oh, welcome. Away. Okay. So, yeah. So, a, a lot of times, like, for this, the example on this one, Mm -hmm. So this is just, a, the idea is that this is from agent to agent, right? So if I put on a listing and I'm like, okay, this is going to be information that Emily is going to want to know herself, um, not necessarily tell the buyer. Now, I love private information and I 99% of the time will just take a copy of that and send it over to the buyer because you, then I can say, hey, home is being sold as is. Like $400,000, 1,700 square feet, like, I mean, I guess it's a royal, like, is there something wrong with it? What's the situation? Well, right out of the gate, obviously they're not going to say this is a dumpster fire in the listing, but when I yeah. see a home is being sold as is, that's going to be my first question of like, hmm, so either they're old, right? Or like they don't have any money or it's actually trashed or maybe somebody died and it's the kids now. Like it gives me a conversation or not just a conversation, but it gives me an opportunity to sort of dig into the situation as to why they're selling. Um, and then obviously one hour notice that also covers your back side because you can say if the if the um, buyer calls you and is like, hey, I need to like get in immediately, right? Because sometimes buyers get all like nervous and service and you go, okay, no, because it's owner, it's owner occupied. It's by appointment only. We can only go until six o'clock tonight. Oh, and you need at least a one hour notice. So what's going to happen? It's 308. Okay, it's probably, I mean, maybe it could happen today. Let me check for you. More than likely, it's going to happen tomorrow. And it really helps on the sell side because in this piece, when you go to a listing appointment, you can literally say, you're in charge. Like, like Ashley's kid naps from one to three. Guess what? That's going to be the first thing I'm going to put in there. No showings from 1230 because she's got to get the, the child home, put him in bed. Right. And then no showings until at least 345 because they get up, kids got a snack, and then they can leave the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that buys you a little bit of customization um, for both sides. Yeah. I just, I was confused. I'm like, um, cause I had don't, I have to let the buyers know that. Right. Like, I'm like, oh, this was private info, but I can't like hide it from them. Yeah, I mean, and really, especially in that situation, if there was a previous tank, that can be like they, the seller, the listing agent and the seller are going to want to tell you anyway, because that yeah. covers them from liability. And it also gives you the opportunity to say, hey, before we go to this property, first of all, do a drive by because just looking at properties like without ever having somebody drive the neighborhood, just not a good idea because it could, a lot of times it's a waste of time when once they get there. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's to make sure and say, hey, there used to be a well oil, like a heating oil tank underground. It's been decommissioned and it's been certified. Everything is fine, yeah. but it is down there and it gives them the opportunity to go, hmm, you know, gosh, I'm really nervous about heating oil tanks right now. You shouldn't be if it's already been decertified or whatever, decommissioned, whatever. Um, but if they are really nervous about it, at least that gives you the talking point and that you're going to want to tell them that, right? And then be able to say, hey, 
you need to do, I mean, this is a good example, buyer to do due diligence, right? So they need to figure out whether it's important or not. You just have to make sure that you're delivering the information that's provided. Because theoretically, they would never know, right? Yeah. Like if it's in private remarks, that's never going to come up in the listing. The only people that know would be you, would be you, the listing agent, the seller. And then if, unless they were actually lying, they would also put it on the um, property disclosures. Yeah. No, so I did it, the rookie move and assumed that they knew that on their report. And then I mentioned it later. They're like, oh, so that was a well, learning. I mean, but I think that's okay. Like to being able to make sure and tell them that information gives them the opportunity to make the decision. Yeah. Because yes, it's, I mean, yes, ultimately you are the one with like all the information, but, and whether you think it's not a big deal, I mean, it might not be a big deal, right? It's like a GFCI outlet, eh, like 10 bucks, right? Who really cares? But mm -hmm. if somebody's really nervous and you get an inspection repair, uh, inspection, I mean, a repair addendum, and they really want that GFCI, then you need to write it down. You know what I mean? So making sure that all that, this is kind of like a sort of a built-in cheat sheet okay. where you can have the, essentially the upper hand and say, hey, like, guess what buyer A and B and C, like, well, whatever, however many buyers you have, right? Like mm -hmm. there is a heating tank underground. Maybe it costs, here's the other side of that. Maybe it costs 500 bucks to remove it and the sellers don't want to do it. And your buyers are like, perfect. We'll pay 500 bucks all day long because we love that house. And it might spook another buyer who's like, oh, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Yeah, and You've already called your buyer and they're like, yeah, I already got a guy because he's got a backhoe and he's going to pull it out of there. No problem. Backfill it. Everyone's happy. And you're like, yes, got the buyer or got the offer because you can write it saying, hey, we're not worried about that oil tank. It's not a big deal. You know? Yeah. Okay. Does yeah. as is always mean that was the same house. It was like sold as is. But then, um, like later on in conversation with the listing agent, he like warmed up to like, oh well, what what repairs would they be wanting? You know, so it was like, oh, this isn't, you know. Yeah, and I so so a lot of times it depends on motivation, mm -hmm. right? Like so this one, right? It said that buyer to do well. Home, sorry, home is being sold as is. Right mm -hmm. now, right. Okay. Megan Maureen Smith, right. There's a lot of judgments going on at the same time. Right. doesn't sound like a super old name. Uh, the house doesn't look like it's in disrepair. Look, it's like, that looks like a nice kitchen. Like, so there's probably the income level is probably, maybe they're just, maybe they just don't want to do any repairs. They're just not willing to spend a ton of money. Now, mm -hmm. if you come in at 405, then you better make sure that in that inspection report, something doesn't come up that's not gonna like kill the deal, right? Like you wanna make sure that whatever that inspection report looks like, you're getting your extra five, $6,000 worth, right? And if you're not, then either they have to decide, nope, we are gonna be, we are gonna be real sticklers and we're not gonna put a penny into this or they're gonna say, okay, well, we've already got owned a contract. We're already in escrow. You've already done all this work for a week off market. Okay, yes, we'll give you 2,500 bucks for like whatever, five windows, right? Okay. Um, so a lot we of times bought, like, go ahead. We bought our house and it was being sold as is, but they ended up having to replace a window that had like, I don't know exactly what the, what was wrong with it, but there was like the seal was bu like busted or there was some sort of like, I don't know, do you remember what it was on the window? like a vapor barrier or something but they had to replace it even though it was being sold as is and i mean there's nothing really wrong with our house um, oh i guess it was because the window was under warranty or something i don't know but we did buy our house and it was kind of like the same thing where the seller was like i don't want to do anything i want to be done with it and she did let us do a few things that had to be done because we had an fha so we, oh, right. as a Needed buyer, did a few things, and I mean, yeah, and see, and, and that's the thing. It. Yeah, and it depends. That's the other thing too, is depending on the loan, right? Like they might have to do things. So there is some level of like, I mean, I'm I'm right in the middle of one right now where the roof is a hot is literally a dumpster fire, but 
these people are going to come in with a ton of money down. They don't need an appraiser. So like, it's really a non-issue, but we know that after getting the inspection report back, there's a bunch of other stuff wrong. And it's like, ugh. okay, so we need to address this, right? So even if you're not necessarily willing, even if they're not on paper saying that it's going to be sold as is, they got to sell it to somebody, right? Yeah. So if they already had, if they're already open escrow with Ashley, then they're like, well, I don't want to go back on market and do this whole thing over again. What does she want? Oh, she wants a window. Just give her the window. Like, right. And sometimes, yes, if you're like, well, I need flooring, granite countertops. Uh, I want a new car in the garage and I want, <laughs> and I want the window. Yeah. They're going to take it to kick rocks. Right. But if, but if you're like, we just want the window, just fix the window that's broken. That should have been fixed two years ago. Then they're like, just give her what she wants. Let's just get this thing to close so I can get my giant check from selling the property and making a bunch of money, you know? So my other question, like if, if a house says like, say it says like, you know, VA loan, does the seller have to do the repairs to get it to qualify for that kind of a loan? Sometimes depending on what it is. Yeah. Like sometimes, I mean, this is a big sticking point in, in like with, when the listing thing, when the listing thing, when the listing appointment happens, um, having the conversation is like, Hey, I need you to know that like, you know, A, B and C are probably gonna need to be addressed, whether they're addressed out of escrow, whether they're addressed yesterday, like you're gonna have to do it because unless somebody rolls in here with cash where mm -hmm. there is no appraiser, that's gonna get red flagged. Right. Okay. And so some of this little stuff, like when you walk through and you go, okay, we need two GFCIs. That's a hundred percent going to get called out. It's right next to the sink. Like go replace the outlet. Right. Or if it's something big, like a window where an appraiser is going to walk by and it's all foggy, right. Each loan excuse me, has their sort of different set of guidelines. So right. Typically VA FHA is the most strict and you go conventional and then cash obviously you don't need an appraiser so it doesn't matter but um and if you get enough money down on a conventional then you can get a uh, what's called an appraisal waiver and then basically it's like hey they're putting a hundred thousand dollars down we don't need an appraiser like the the percentage down is enough that the loan the bank isn't concerned with mm. um with worrying about getting money back if if um if it goes into foreclosure right they already have their big chunk of it and if they still lose the house then even if they sell it at a discount they're going to make a profit okay good question there <clears throat> um okay all right let's okay ahas ahas to achievement oh we're like really getting close to the end here guys um Okay, so first up, we revisited what it means to be an A-qualified seller, right? Focused on what listings do for our career, right? Next, we covered how to get the appointment. Um, next, we focused on the listing appointment itself. Um, finally, went over our listing agreement and the other relevant documents from our market center. Um, for a listing appointment, just as like a snapshot, right? Always bring this, the initial disclosure packet, just legally, you always need to bring that. In fact, I even bring it when I just go to a, a Fizbo's house for sale by owner, just like just to cover the basis so that not only do they know that I'm a realtor, but like just if there's any legal questions about procurement or whatever, I just I don't I like to answer the question before it's asked. I'd rather walk up with this and tell them that I can keep it or have them tell me I can keep it versus not having it and then like having a bunch of questions down the road. Um and a listing presentation, right? And then a pen, notepad, um, all that stuff. And then really listing up a listing agreement, right? With your um, RMLS input form. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, so call to action. So prepare, so right, we need to all prepare and practice your pre-listing packet and then your listing presentation. Obviously make sure there's a clear delineation between the two. Um, you know, sometimes people go over overboard and they do like um these envelopes are like a manila envelope and like you put your business card and you put like a 
thing of pens or like a whatever, right? You can make like this whole fancy presentation if you want, but nine times out of 10, if you just can either send them an email or shoot it to them in, a, in, a, in an email or in a snail mail, right? Then they can look it over um, so that you can get the listing appointment and then just get in front of them. And really that's when you're trying to sell yourself is not, not with the pre-listing packet, but make sure at the listing presentation itself, you're, you're at your highest and best. Um, okay, a couple questions. How has your thinking changed? Um, any ideas or mindsets that were new? Um, is there anything that you feel differently about? Anything that was meaningful to you today? Do you guys have any more questions or ahas? Um, that you can think of. Let's see what else we got on here. Um, we want to oh write in your participant guide. So your homework is in your participant guide. Write write how you've grown in each of these areas. Those four things. Um, Take time to reflect on what you've learned. Um, da, 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 daily success timeline. So what are you guys doing? 20 minutes? Oh, oh yeah, right. 10 conversations a day, 10 contacts added, 10 handwritten notes, um, 1051 social media engagement. I can't remember what 1051 is. Using it's 10 model. 10 comments, five or 10 likes or five comments and one message. Like one. Oh yeah. Um that's good. I will say the handwritten note. In fact, I was just telling somebody I met with um Matt Powell, who is at Capital Mortgage or Capital, sorry, Blue Ink Capital. Um, and he I don't have any more, which sucks because I was going to show it to you, but I met with him because I had some questions about private money and I was like, hey, explain it to me. I got this this buyer and it, they're just really tricky and I really want to do my best and I have to best for them. Like, oh, nervous. How do we get this thing done? And uh, so we had this great meeting. We had coffee, like a couple, you know, hour and a half. Like I was like learning. I'm just so good. I'm like a sponge. I'm like, this is so great. So so I come back to the office, right? Have my day, have my next day. Day after that, card shows up in the mail. It's a little handwritten card, card from Matt that says, great to meet you. Something really very vanilla, like great to meet you. Looking forward to do business with you. Have a great week, Matt. Sent it, right? And I got that card and I was like, damn it, this guy's good. <laughs> I was like... This took him 10 seconds to write this. I'm certain he has an assistant that mailed it. I'm like, ah, these are so impactful because I remember thinking like this guy, yes, he probably only, and only because I'm a realtor, I recognize this now with an assistant who like does the same thing for me as I go, man, it was so impactful because I got a, a personalized piece of paper or a card that said, thank you for spending time with me. And I was like, he's way more important than I am. And he's thanking me. So like those, those um, thank you cards, I think are just so incredibly important and so often overlooked by myself included, right? When I first got licensed, I was like, ah, nobody wants to see a card for me. And then I started to write them <laughs> and I was like, man. And then Matt sent me that one. And I was like, this works. It works. It's sticky. I'm telling that story forever. Like it's, I can't not, every time I hear, I see the words handwritten note, I immediately think of that stupid 10 second card that you wrote. And I was like, gosh, it made such a difference in my day that day that I'll never forget about it. And so to become sticky in someone's mind infinitely gets you business, right? So 100% worth it. I was just at a convention a few months ago in Vegas and I met an agent over there and she sent me a UNLV coffee cup. Like, does not matter? Not really. But the fact that she took right? There's chocolates inside. I don't need chocolates, but like <laughs> somebody built this little kit for me. She took 30 seconds to write a card. Ironically, I did it to her too, but like it builds that relationship, right? And especially for her and I, 
and the other agents I sent one to all over the country is we're getting those referrals right from out of state and getting those leads and being able to be sticky in someone's mind. And you can get that listing appointment and just crush it because you already have that built in trust. It's already into the equation. You're not just somebody, you know, that, that nobody knows about. Somebody's already said something and already been able to prime the pump for you. So yeah, social media cards, all that stuff. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Um, Okay, you'll be accomplishing most of these during our daily success system. Um, keep doing these activities outside of class. Yes, all day long. Um, work with your accountability partner. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have to say, if you guys make calls, make sure don't call people on the do-dog call list. Honor the TCPA. Um, not call. Um, right, do not call. We can all see that. Uh, I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. It's true, it's true, and it's a great mantra to remind yourself of. Uh, prepare your conversation list, right? We want to make sure and plan who you're going to call. Um, determine who you're going to call, right? So D2, they, have they already talked about the D, DTD2? Uh, about your call list? Has, she, has Mara said anything about that? So the idea is like go through your contacts and basically you just pick a letter. There's a thing in bold. I can send it to you guys later if you want to, but or if you Google DTD2, there's a, <clears throat> basically just breaks up your contact list. So if you're going to call down the list instead, of, like you basically just start at A's. It's like A and B on Monday, C and D on, you know, Tuesday, E and F. And so basically just work your way down. And then by the time you work your way to the bottom and you start back to the top again. Uh, lead generation conversations. <clears throat> so you guys role play with these with your call partner. Suggest a meetup to reconnect. Yes, that's why I do pie giveaways, 100%. Right? I want to get you back in the office for some reason, even if it's to give you a $6 pie from Costco. People love it. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Uh, um, um, okay, so for the follow-up context, it says bring in your... Bring in your market center tech trainer for help on this if you're not familiar with command. Um, so obviously each time you get in your contacts, you want to make sure and update them and you put notes in there when you talk to them. Um, I had to make sure and put one in the other day. Uh, it was a nickname that I think the wife's nickname, I think the wife went by a different name and it was way different than her given name. And I was like, who is this person? And I had to like, I was like deep in thought for a while and then I was like, oh, because she got entered wrong. And so I had to make sure and put her in the notes. I put it, the name that I recognized in the actual contact and in the notes, I said, okay, legal name is such and such. And I was like, don't want to call the wrong person the wrong name or have Molly call the wrong person and call her the wrong name. It'd be even worse. So um, yeah, making sure to get that into command and, and update those things as you talk to people. Um Right, you guys all know how to add context and command. Right, yeah, okay. Um, and then in command, obviously there's like a notes section on the right side. You just click that button, you can add a note. Um, okay. Celebrate success. You guys are all doing this, right? Conversations, contacts, doing the notes. Um, Um, KW app, it's always good. I don't know, have they done, have, has there been any trading on KW app at all? I did a, in fact, um, I think we're at the end. Okay, I'll show you this really quick so you guys can get out of here. I know we're way over, I apologize. Um, so let me show you this. Okay. Oh, 
as a whole. That's right. Uh, okay. So, okay, can you see this? So I have a link tree. Uh, okay, so when you go in my bio and in my Instagram, right, click the link, this is my link, right? Now, if I can capture your information, that's great. Obviously, right, what's my home worth? Home tips and tricks. Vote for me, which is like a whole different thing. Let's buy a home, right? Social media, all that stuff. Now, on the new listings with the app or with your own personal website, so like mine's kendallsellshomes.com, but it auto-populates to the, the KW one. When I click it, none of these are my listing, right? None of them. However, they're all over a million dollars. Why? Because that's my goal is to get clientele that want to buy a million dollar house. The great part is I've put all of these listings that don't go to Zillow because I'm not going to get any leads from Zillow. I'm literally going to put, if I put a Zillow link, it's literally going to give an option to go talk to another agent, right? So what I do is, is I get the link for these properties onto my website, right? And then both in command, if somebody wants to know more information, right? Or on the app, they can use that link and look up that property, right? And for legal purposes, obviously, we know it's Betty Lou Duncan's listing. But if somebody wants to buy it for 1.495 million, <laughs> then who are they gonna talk to? They're gonna ask Matt Kendall. <laughs> So being able to be strategic in getting people, it's incredibly difficult to get somebody to use another app because there's a billion apps out there, right? But if you can if you can either have them use the app to look up this information or to be able to to be able to direct them to your own website to be able to integrate with command, so helpful because those notes that I was talking about, it automatically populates in their timeline. So if I send you the link, Ashley, and you actually click it, then it says, oh, Ashley was looking up property ABC. And then I'm like, oh, sweet. She clicked on the $1.5 million. I wonder if she like, came into some money and wants to buy this sick house. Well, obviously, I'm going to then reach out to you. And then I'm going to say, oh, you already own a property? Because I'm going to do my research and go back and go, okay, now who is this Ashley? Oh, she owns a home. Oh, her address is like 123 Main Street. Awesome. So potentially, she wants to buy this house. And probably more than likely to buy that house, she wants to sell her property. Um, Right. And so you can not only come from value, but the fact that you don't have to do any of the work, you just put the link there for everyone to see. Really helps narrow down where people are, you know, getting their information done. All right, guys, before we go, uh, looks like we're at the end. So do we have any ahas? Um, if not, I really appreciate your time and, uh, my office is here, so if you guys ever have any questions, don't hesitate to swing by and pick my brain and happy to help um, with anything. So. so with that, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna cut out of here. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate your time today. Have a good rest of your Monday, guys. Good See you too. later. Bye-bye. Thanks.